Yo, what is up, everybody? Um, welcome to the new Smart Bros. Series Seasonal Relay. Um, my name is Zilla, or you can call me Zach if you really feel like it. Um, this is a relay where we have teammates, teams of five, um, each member of each team playing a different game of the new Super Mario series. Um, and once one person beats one game, we go to the next game. And so it's going to go from new Super Mario Bros. DS to new Super Mario Bros. Wii to new Super Mario Bros. 2, new Super Mario Bros. U, and then new Super Luigi U. And yeah, we have a really cool, cool cast of runners and commentators too. So I'm super excited. We also have a little donation campaign going on. If you feel like supporting a little nonprofit I'm passionate for um, called the Boys and Girls Club, uh, it's totally up to you. But um, I believe Speed Gaming's fixing the link to help with that. But yeah, I have my co-organizer Josh with me here and he's gonna introduce the teams. Good luck runners and everybody, thanks. Hello, it's Josh here. Uh, so we have the three teams, you can see them on the layout. Uh, team one, called the Pocoso Landers, and we are starting out with uh, Spicy Noodles on DS, which will switch to NM Speedruns on Wii, followed by Picasa, which is the uh, namesake of their team. He'll be running NSME2, followed by CAD or CADS. Uh, he's running at NSMBU on the Wii U. And if you round that out, we have Super64 Guy on NSLU. The next team is Team Henry, starting out with Caleb on the DS. Then Volza, which I'm not sure if you know him, he's, he might be here. He's running on the Wii. We have Swim Ding on NSMB2, Astix on NSMBU and the Latchers on NSLU, who will actually be commentating this first DS portion. And then the uh, last team, which, honestly, it's my team, but I don't know how to say it. It's, I think it's Nadere Sus, uh, otherwise known as, uh, I believe, Swim Ding. <laughs> and that's with me on DS, or Josh, I should say, followed by Big Cheese on Wii, Kanishi on NSMB2, Skippy on NSMBU, and the U video on NSLU. So, all of these runners are very good at their game. Some of them good at multiple games, but you should have a very good, very close race. Yeah, so without further ado, I'll pass it on to our DS commentators, Latchers, and you. All right, hello it's everyone, Mike. I'm the video. And I'm the other one. <laughs> and we're gonna be commentating New Super Mario Bros. for you guys today. Um, both of us are also running in this relay, but we're playing Luigi U. But we both have also speedrun this one a little bit in the past, so we know what we're talking about. Some of us a lot further in the past. <laughs> yeah. I just find so it funny that, of... that they got a, they got two uh, they got an NSLU runner and a Galaxy runner to commentate this game. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be fun. Well, we're just waiting for them to get started here, I guess. We gotta... And then we can start talking about what they're doing. Yeah, so on, on a spicy noodle screen, you can see him practicing. This is a pretty good tactic for speedrunning. Um, <laughs> uh, it helps you shave a couple seconds off your time. Um... <laughs> Also, I just want to say good luck to everybody. Hope we all have fun. Uh, so, yeah, so what he does is he hurts himself there, and then he, like, does a triple jump, and then a ground pound, and then some more wall kicks. Do they just start? Oh, no. <laughs> No, nope, we're doing. <laughs> well, I guess you know what. Before they get started, I can at least introduce who each runner is. So, for Team One, we have Spicy Noodles. Who? Hold on, I just closed the page. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have Spicy Noodles, who has 
third place in any percent. He has a 22-15. And then we have Josh, who has the world record. He just got two world records in the last week. He has a 22 Yeah, a 22-11. And then we have Caleb, who has a 23-07. And Caleb is also really good at Luigi U. Actually got a second place Luigi U time within the last week. But he did practice DS2, don't worry. He'll be fine. Yeah. Looks like all the runners are getting ready to go. We can see Caleb is playing on the, the Japanese version of the game, which is very that is epic. interesting. I, uh, I think it saves like the tiniest minuscule amount of time. I didn't even know that saved time. That's interesting. I don't know. I'm just saying things at this point. <laughs> Oh, they'll start soon, I'm sure. The countdown just ended, so... Oh, alright. Looks like they're about to about to be off in uh, any moment now. Go. No, that didn't work. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there we go. They're off. All right. So, so uh, straight away off the bat, we can see that Josh and Spicy Noodles will be saving two seconds because they pressed L and R, um, like the bumpers on their DSs when they started the game. You can tell that you got the strat correct because you're playing as Luigi, not Mario. <laughs> so yeah, pretty so vital time save. For real, there is actually some stuff. Interesting stuff they have already done to save time before the run even started, and I can talk a little bit about that. So, New Super Mario Bros. Uh, has a lot of RNG, particularly on the world map with the red blocks that kind of move around from level to level. So, something that they've already done is all of them actually started the game at a specific time. And now what they can do while they're playing this first level is actually do specific numbers of double jumps, and I believe triple jumps as well. In no, order it's to... just double jumps. Oh, just double jumps. In order to continue manipulating the RNG seed that they're on. Well, not the seed, but to continue manipulating the RNG in order to get this red block right here to move to level 1-2. So all of them should get it. Yep. And... Normally, this block would have a 1 in 8 chance to give you a shell. But if they all did it correctly, they should all be easily getting a shell. Um, Josh did not Josh get a did shell? not go for the shell. That's interesting. Hmm. Well, I don't know. Wait, did he not go for it or did he not get it? Well, he got the red block. He just didn't hit it. He just kept going. Huh, interesting. I've never seen that before. Well, I guess we'll figure that out. Um, not to worry, though, because the next level actually does... Or, not the next level. Right after 1-2, there is a Mushroom House. And in that Mushroom House, you can get pretty much any item. And one of those is a shell. So it will cost him, like, 15 seconds to go get that. But it's really easy. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. And this shell's going to be really important because the secret exit in 1-Tower, which is coming up now, requires you to have the shell for it, so they absolutely need it. So let's see if these yeah. guys get the fastest cycle in this first room here. Okay, got it so far. Those first few jumps are the hardest part. Yeah. Oh man, Spicy Noodles, noodles scared me I think there. Noodles should be fine, though. Okay. Yeah. What is Josh doing? Did he get a shell? Oh, he did, okay. He get a shell. Nice. And Josh also got the uh, cycle there. We call it the task cycle. It used to be thought to be only like a tool-assisted speedrun only kind of trick, but it's not really as hard as some of the other things that people do in the run now. No, no. The um, the first three jumps can be pretty daunting with those like closing um, things, but... Uh... Oh. Once you get the hang of it, it's What just uh, happened to good. Caleb? <laughs> Caleb 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 just started over. Did Caleb oh Caleb lost shell. Oh. He could have um gone back to one one and gotten a thirty-three on the flagpole. That would actually cause another mushroom house to spawn. He could have gotten another one. Uh oh well. <laughs> 
It's what fine. A great it's the day. fine. It's okay. Josh is going to lose 27 seconds. All right. So basically, the way this run is going to go is right now they're already taking off to World 5 using the cannon, and then they're going to get another cannon in World 5 and take off to World 8. So it's going to be really quick. Uh, ideally, they'll yeah. be reaching World 8 in around 8 minutes. So, and then the rest of the run they yeah. spend in World 8. Yep. So yeah, they're going to be trying to keep this shell. At this point, it's not like absolutely vital. Because like I said, no. they've already gotten through the secret exit that required it. But it will save a lot of time if they can keep it. Yeah. you see as well, like um, on this level especially, you saw that Spicy Noodle spent the entire level in his shell. And you can see Josh is sort of jumping in and out of his shell. It's because when you're moving in the shell, you move about 7% slower than if you were not in the shell. Um, so ideally, you want to be um, doing un what, are, what are called unmorphs, where you release the run button in midair. You, keep your, you still have the same speed, but you get out of the shell, so you go a little bit faster. But you can also do another strat called QSG, which is what Spicy Noodles did. Um, and you just saw um, Caleb try to do it, which allows you to have full running speed, so you don't have that 7% speed loss while in the shell. Yeah, QSG I mean, stands for Quick Slide Glitch, and it's yeah. when you slide off the edge, you do like some certain inputs, and that actually allows you to keep that full running speed. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. It was one of those other task movements that people just didn't really, didn't really think about until pretty, well, I say pretty recently, but that was like years ago. <laughs> Now they're taking the secret pipe all the way to 5-3, so they don't have to do 5 tower. And in 5-3, they're going to probably go for a glitch called hyperspeed, where they're going to grab this shell and then throw it and try to chain together a bunch of frame-perfect jumps. And if they can keep chaining together frame-perfect jumps, they can actually keep this faster speed from the slope. Mm. Wow. So Spicy Noodles, I believe, got it for a little bit and then did the QSG glitch. So that's pretty cool. So on Josh's screen, he's still got... So he loses it there. Yeah, it's pretty commonplace to lose hyperspeed. That's what the um, what the glitch is called, or the, the strat. Well, good thing is Caleb has gotten to the door. Okay, so I'm curious to see if Spicy Noodles is going to get a mini shroom from this hammer bro here, because if he does, he can do something pretty interesting. Oh, I don't think okay, anyone's going go for it. it. Okay. Yeah, so the newest thing, the the biggest newest thing in the uh in the run at the moment is uh what is called mini route, which is a um which is a what was used to be known as a TAS only route, but pretty much you get mini mushroom in uh this level and it allows you to skip a great portion of the end of this level. Um plus some other things as well. Um, and the reason it hadn't been implemented in, uh, until now was because to get a mini mushroom in this level from the Hammer Bro was highly unlikely and we didn't ha really understand how to um, manipulate the RNG to be able to get the um, mini mushroom here. But um, thanks to a Tasser named Super, we now have what is called Super Manip, which is a high, like a super extended manipulation um, and it's... You know, he spent a lot of time documenting a lot of things, and so now, given a specific Mac, given your specific MAC address on your DS, he can find out your specific settings to get Super Minip, which is it's really pushed this game further. The settings meaning like before you start your game, you go into your settings and change the time and date on your DS, and then open your game at a specific time, and that's what manipulates the RNG seed. But it's different mm. for everybody's DS, depending on what your MAC address is. It's very interesting. Mm. And it's crazy that he was able to make a whole program that's actually able to figure out exactly yeah. what you need to do in order to get your RNG manipulated all the way through the run, in order to get that shell in World 1, the mini shroom in World 5, and to do some more stuff in World 8 that we're going to talk about in a little bit. Mm. So as for the power up routing at the moment, we really, um, actually, no, I lie. <laughs> I was going to say, we really only need the shell for one more level. That's eight, three, because you swim faster with it. But I, I forgot the shell route is now like the thing 
again. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not? <laughs> you haven't watched a run in a while, have you? <laughs> no. Yeah, it's okay. I'll a little bit, a little bit of history. <laughs> so, ages ago, in 2015, we used to do Shell Route, which is where we would we would keep Shell until the end of the game. That's that's what would happen. And then, um, in some point in 2016, it um, Fire Route was popularized. So after eight three, we would get rid of Shell and then use a Fire Flower for the rest of the game. And that um, was faster because. Like we said, the shell speed is a little bit slower, yeah. so it just allowed you to be at full speed at all times. Yeah, this was back when we weren't doing stuff like QSG and um, other things. Oh yeah, we've got fast fast A2 here. And yeah, Spicy, Spicy Noodles, Noodles just did, did a trick there called Fast A2, aka the moon jump. If you um, let go of, I believe it's the B button, at a certain point in your jump with the shell, I think it's the peak of your jump, actually. Yeah. You just get an extra jump, like midair, <laughs> basically a moon jump, and that allows you to skip that whole little room there. He definitely didn't save time with it, but it was still cool that he got it. I think at this point, everyone just goes for it if they have shell. Yeah, just for. Yeah. For um, fun. yeah. No, this is it's, it's another one of those strats that we we weren't implementing in our runs until. Um, pretty recently, because, you know, TAS stuff is not, is hard. <laughs> yeah, so back to Latchers, back to what was, La what Latchers was saying, <laughs> we used to take the shell all the way to the end of the game at first, and then we started taking the Fire Flower instead to get that little bit of faster speed, and then it went back to taking the shell to the end of the game, because somebody found a moon jump time save yeah somebody found a time save involving that moon jump i just talked about in one of the later levels that made shell faster again but now things are a little different and i'm just not going to spoil that yet we'll see it later it'll happen you guys watch <laughs> someone will do something okay so this bowser jr fight's pretty cool you're supposed to like hit him with the shell to like stun him or whatever but if you like time those hits perfectly you can actually just kind of stun lock him yeah, it's, it's, it's like kinda, pretty tight. Yeah, it's uh, pretty crazy how you like just run up and do the tiniest jump and somehow you hit him. Yeah, so luckily Spicy Noodles was able to keep his shell this far, so he's going to save a lot of time in yeah. A-3 over everyone else because the shell gives you way faster swimming speed, so this is a long underwater level. He's going to save a lot. Another thing as well that the runners will be doing, I think at this point, is anytime they end up on a level, especially in these early stages of World 8, anytime they end up on a level with the Hammer Bro or the um, Red Block, they're going to try and hit it. And that what that does is it despawns it, so that way they're not having enough to wait for them to move, because that's a, one of the biggest time losses in, the, uh, in this game that's uncontrollable is the movements of the Hammer Bro and well, the Red Box. Sort of. I, I have no, more to say about me. that. Yeah, some things have changed, Latch. <laughs> Keep up with the times. <laughs> I have more to talk about that after 8 Castle, though. We don't want the bridge crosses. Well, just bear with me. <laughs> I'm still salty about my, like, four bridge crosses in my PB. Well, I have some good news for you, but we'll get there. <laughs> I have some bad news for you. <laughs> Which is? I don't have a DS anymore. Oh no, <laughs> that's tough. All right, well, this, well, Spicy Noodles is through A3 now, so he's probably going to get rid of his shell here. Yep. So yeah, he grabbed a Fire Flower in 8 Tower, and he's now going to equip that and mm. use that for a while. Here's one thing I can comment on, because Josh doesn't have um, shell, he can do a little strategy where these like uh, pipes pushing to the right if you hold neutral while um, being pushed by that, you get you get the speed boost for longer. So uh, if you didn't have shell, you can just be faster because you hold neutral. So one of the reasons the Fire Flower is really good for 8-4 is when he lands on these gray platforms, these ones that are moving, you'll see him throwing fireballs. Um, and you'll see Josh do it right now. 
Um, those gray platforms have a chance to just make you stop and lose all your speed. We call it a it's pixel actually, stop. It's actually, it's actually the gray platforms that's moving up or down. The ones oh, that are moving okay. left to right don't you don't get it. But yeah, oh, no, okay. you can just but, yeah. It's the Either same way. as like landing on the very corner of a of an edge as well. You get a pixel stop. Yeah, so it has a chance to just do that. So by throwing a fireball right before you land on it, that'll never happen. So that's just one really effective way to prevent that. Caleb got really lucky there with the, the fire flower. I didn't even really pay attention to Spicy Noodles' eight castle, but it must have been really good considering he got a 477 time at the door. We can Definitely. see Josh do it now. He's going to go for a pretty scary strat where he kind of ducks off of this one platform. You'll see it now. Very nice. good. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, that, Spicy Noodles did the same thing. And then for Dry Bowser, you can just jump right over him. Okay, so if you look over at Spicy Noodles, it's... Street Wait, that right wasn't now. the end of the game? That wasn't the end? <laughs> you'll see that this no. is not the end of the game, but you'll also see a giant bridge that just appeared. So this is what Latcher was referring to earlier when he talked about bridge crossings. So the red blocks and the hammer bros that are on the world map have a chance to cross that bridge. Well, normally they do. And when they do, it costs you about three seconds, and you never want to get that. However, with all the RNG manip stuff that they've done, one of the side effects is that they've manipulated the red blocks and the hammer bros in world 8 to only ever go to the left meaning they can never possibly cross the bridge and lose you three seconds so that is like one of the coolest things about the new manipulation is you won't get screwed over by that time loss ever again and that's taking the fun out of the run also uh spicy noodles is in 8.5 fun fact about 8.5 yes. is it's a pretty easy level yeah <laughs> looks hard looks hard because there's a lot of lava it's not. Fire Flower makes it super trivial. But this next level. <laughs> okay, but 8 6 for real is actually really cool, and you should just watch Spice and Noodles' screen. So you can skip that uh, one propeller there by bouncing off the Koopa and maybe skip the pipe at the end. Yep. Yeah. Nice. That was awesome. See yeah. Josh does it. Just, just some normal things. This is still a pretty close race between the first two. And I mean, Caleb is really not like that far behind. Like so much can still happen. In the grand There's like thing. still another whole four games. Yeah, a lot can happen, and the this game is n definitely not as punishing as some of the next four can be. So, still very early on. Yeah, and SMB two is easily the most punishing game of the lot. Uh, oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> the spicy <laughs> noodles just did something on there where he threw fireballs right before landing on those ropes, and that actually allowed him to jump off of them. We call it fire hops. And we'll see Josh do it now. So yeah, that just saves time because instead of slowly climbing along the rope, you just do some jumps. Yeah, you just like jump. Yeah, now Josh got it. And so Caleb is in 8-4, but he doesn't have Fire Flower, so instead he's crouching on those platforms moving up and down. Oh. <laughs> and he's also talking to spiders, apparently, too. Yeah, he's crouching on those platforms, and that's also another way you can prevent yourself from losing all your speed on them. Yes, just okay, to clear so, it up, everyone, U video meant the the cliffs, like the cliff edges and whatnot, not ropes. Um, I know, I know, everyone, everyone's upset, but oh, whatever. Um, anyway, spicy um, noodles made it through eight eight. Those meteors are random. We're gonna see how it goes for Josh now. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there's a this, set number of patterns, but I don't know them. <laughs> there's a chance that this um. This star block that he hits can despawn, so a meteor hits it at the same time as he hits it. And yeah. so that way he doesn't get the star, and it makes the end of this level a lot more difficult. But fortunately, that didn't happen to him. The star as well in this game, and all NSMB games, makes you move faster. But in this one specifically, it's um, 
you only move faster when you're on the ground. Oh, oh I see okay, why you're around now. Yeah, I don't know I if you're see. looking at. I was trying I to let you explain that, but I also wanted to talk about what Spicy Noodles just did. Um, so he did a really cool little triple jump and then used a ground pound to gain some extra height to just barely make it up to that top section. And instead of waiting around on this long auto scroller, you're gonna see Josh do it too here. Oh, okay, he messed up. Um, you can make it all the way to where the checkpoint is and then intentionally take a death. And when you take that death and re-enter the level, the snake block gets warped all the way to where the checkpoint is and it saves around 15 seconds, I believe. It's yeah, quite it's a quite lot. Yeah, it's quite substantial. Yeah, before, so the, um, what I was thinking they were going to do is shower out where they would do that similar thing, but instead of using, you know, damaging themselves and re-equipping fire, they would jump off the um, thing and do a moon jump into the wall and then do those wall kicks. Um, previously, we didn't do that, obviously, and uh, we would just like ride it for like half the way and then damage boost all the way up to the checkpoint. Yeah, if you don't want to uh, do that scary like ground pound cancel to get the extra height, which is pretty hard from what I've heard, uh, you can wait about seven seconds longer to do the trick, and you don't have to do that. And it still saves time over just doing it normally. Mm. There is a little trick they're going to do here where they store triple jump height into a crouch, and that'll allow them to jump off the snake block a little bit earlier, so... Yeah, spicy noodles got that. Josh nearly just like, yeah, <laughs> not doing well. And fire killing Bowser Jr. Cool thing about Bowser Jr. is every three fireballs that you hit him with just counts as one hit. So you can hit him with nine fireballs, and that's it. It's a lot faster than jumping on him. No more Bowser. All right, on Wait, to the final what? There's castle. another level. What? <laughs> I see Noodles is on pretty good pace. Not quite, I think. Oh, actually, it might be 22 pace, yeah. I Yeah, it's 22 pace. If this was so like two years ago, if this was two years ago, we'd be going like, oh my god, 22 in a, in a marathon? Yeah, yeah. But now it's sort of like... Faster, but... it's now it's just like pretty normal <laughs> for these guys. Yeah. Which oh, is like real, yeah. crazy. Shout out to you, plea. There's not too much really to even say about this final level. Like, they're just going to try to play really optimally. Yeah. By the How end of it, they're the, going to be a Luigi. The final, final boss is pretty cool. <laughs> I'm curious to see how that goes. I hear Caleb got the fire hop. I hear there's necromancy in the final level, in the final fight. Uh, I don't know what that means, but okay. Bringing things back from the dead. Ah, uh, yes. But I don't know. So Caleb is now going to enter, be entering eight eight. <laughs> Oh yeah, and this final room here is actually interesting. You have to take a certain path through it or else it'll just keep looping. It's kind of reminiscent of some of the levels in uh, Super Mario Bros. 2, the Lost Levels, that would also have uh, have it so that you have to take a certain path or else it would just keep mm. looping like that. Ooh, <clears throat> cool little reference fun. there. All right, so for this final boss... Ooh. You know, you're normally Kale supposed deciding to, like, to, to wait supposed to kill Bowser Jr. and then finally Bowser starts jumping and you can go under him. You can also just jump off of Bowser Jr. and get right over him. And that's it for you Spicy know, Noodles. Pretty normal stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that's a little harder than it looks. Bowser Jr. will normally go into his shell before you can do that, but if you time it just right, you can Ooh. land on his head. Caleb with the fireworks. Ooh. <laughs> All right, now Josh is coming up on the end. It's not even going to be a bad time from Josh either, honestly. No. I think he'll probably beat, like, both of our PBs. <laughs> yep. At least mine. I don't know about yours. Probably. Knowing Josh. 
But I believe that'll be it from us two. The uh, yep, NSMB will. Will... will be coming in to talk about the next game. Well, I will also be commentating that game. All right, GG for oh, you... God. Are you... Oh, then is that... <laughs> yeah. that's me done. I'm, I'm, I finished. So yeah, uh, good job, Latchers. It was fun. See you guys soon when I'm on the screen. <laughs> Go yes, on. good luck on your run later. I can't wait. All right, see you then. Hello. Hello. Hello, alien. You want to introduce yourself? Wait, why? Wait. How many? Why is there three people in here? Oh, I thought it was going to be me and you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome to the three person commentary for we. I'm alien. And we have Bikir over here, and you video, yeah, I guess. Cool one. All right, so we got NM finishing 1-1. One, one. Big G's not far behind. And Caleb is, you know, he's in 8 tower oh, too. Still in the S. Okay, so you'll see Big Cheese doing, uh, grabbing the propeller with the shell, which is a DSS, which is a cool strat. And besides that, there's not much going on in the first two levels, really, except for just movement. So, actually, I thought I thought uh, Team 1 actually had a bigger lead on Team 3, but it's actually not that bad. It's only really Team 2. Yeah. But I'm just gonna interject for one second. I, I think there was a miscommunication, so I'll go ahead and let you guys uh take over the commentary, but it's been fun. I will see y'all during my NSLU run. <laughs> Bye you video. Bye. Good Bye. Luck. Good luck. Alright, now we're getting to the real juicy stuff. <laughs> one three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we see the meal strat? Um, maybe. Maybe, maybe. So basically, for all the uh, people who haven't watched the TAS earlier, we got a new strat in 8 Castle called the meal. Um, it's basically, you know, you kind of clip so you don't have to do a fireball manip, and it saves about 8 seconds, which, if you don't know what fireball manip is, we'll probably explain it further into the run. And uh, We found out about the strat um, two hours ago. When the when the newest test was revealed, so it's kind of crazy. I'm guessing at least, I assume at least one or two people are gonna try it because I think it only loses like five or six seconds if you mess it up. But you know, mm -hmm. we need to like at least see one person do it. Yeah. I think uh, I think a few people are probably gonna go for it. I don't know. Uh, wait, who's running for team two? Is it? Um... I think it's Volza. Oh yeah, Volza. Uh, I think NM's gonna go for it because I was just talking to him and he mm -hmm. told him to if, do it. So yeah, Volza actually uh, thought, said he already uh, had gotten it at least once, so he probably go for it as well. I'd probably go for it at least two. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Big Cheese has done it or not. I've got Toad getting taken. Going into World 5, which is, uh, could lose them a lot of time. Caleb's having fun. He's almost done. Mm -hmm. And then Volza can start. Caleb's on sub-30 pace. Oh my god, guys, this is crazy. People in the chat are debating the name, but I'm, I'm afraid we're just going to use the meal. 
and there's not much you can do about it. <laughs> yeah, I think the meals is better, or you know, <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel like the name discussion in this community is really, you know, it's interesting. Just as the last strat that was discovered, the penguin slide and three ghost house, mm -hmm. uh, that, that had an interesting name discussion as well. I think everyone just kind of names it whatever they want, really. Um, okay, Caleb, almost, almost done here. Let's get. Hopefully he does not mess up. Shout out to Yipley. And I'm moving his way through 5-1, doing water skip here, jumping out of the water and spinning. Oh, Caleb! Mm -hmm. He's doing oh, the Yipley! Yeah. No! No, no <laughs> Caleb! Every time I say Yipley, dude! What are you doing? Um, Alright, so, you know, it's fine. We're just going back in. Not a big deal. Man, we're out here doing. Through five one. We're, we're doing Edison B commentary. Also, big cheese right now. It'll grab the grab the star, which is uh, consistent. If you do the same thing every time, the cycle is consistent, then you'll get the star, which makes running through the level very easy. All right, come on, Caleb. I'm not gonna say shout out to Yipley. <laughs> shout out to Yipley. See, okay, it's, it, it, it doesn't work every time. GG Caleb. Alright, GG Caleb, you know, that was like a 30, 30.05 or something. Okay, now NM, he's got like a somewhat of a split path here. 5 2 or 5 3. 5 3 is faster by around, uh, I think it's like 3 seconds, 3 to 4. Yeah, so you do it optimally, because uh, 5 2 has a pipe load. Per, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is pretty difficult movement. Like five three is a pretty difficult level. Here's Nem's gonna do a donut jump, which is a pretty. Oh, he's not even gonna do a go for it. He's just gonna play it safe. I don't say it's an IGT. You can, actually, you can actually do that part without slowing down by jumping on the brambles, but it's kind of risky. Oh, and he's oh, just a little bonk. There. <laughs> We're still good though. As long as he keeps his prop, we should be good. There is a backup prop in five three, but after five three, there's no props until eight airship. Mm -hmm, yeah. So yeah, if you lose it after five three, like in tower, it's pretty. Uh, it's not gonna be good, but he mm -hmm. seems like he's chilling. Then our big cheese, big cheese is also no, five three. I think big cheese will be going for donut jump and WSS actually, which we can then talk about. Okay, he's not doing the box rats. All right. You can see Big Cheesy is jumping on the on the brambles and not slowing down as much. And if you don't slow down as much, uh, the music in this uh, game actually goes in cycles, and the Koopas dance to the music. So if you go fast enough, the Koopa here will dance, and that sets uh, it up for this strat where you kill the bramble with the shell. It's pretty nice, it's moving. All right, uh, NM is in five tower, which has a number of cycles you can get. Five, five, six being the hardest one, and the only one you can get RTA, and that is the fastest. Uh, five, four, six is another popular one. That's mostly what uh mid mid level runners get. But um, looks like he's on pace for the five, five, six. Yep, he's gonna be getting it pretty easily here. Five, five, seven actually. Act of five, five. He did it so fast that he got a five, five, seven. And Vols is now cruising through five, one one, mm -hmm. trying to make up some of this uh, lost time. Let's see if Big Cheese can uh, clutch out the uh, five five six. Clean right. five thirty. Oh, in fact, Big Cheese is going for. Oh, oh Big Cheese was going for oh. a Aztec cycle, which is a faster way of doing five five six. She still got on the same cycle, but it's faster. But he missed it, so he'll now not he's be getting, getting five, five, four, five six. six. Yeah, which only Sweet. loses about like seven seconds, I think it is. Mm -hmm. So it's not too bad, but it's impressive he's going for such risky uh, strats in this really. All right, now NM going to be entering 5-4, which is going to be doing 5-4 skip, which is, is one of the most, save? probably the most popular 
uh, skip in this game. You're going to be skipping. You normally have to use this raft to go across the uh, poison lake, which takes about a minute and 20 seconds, but he will be skipping it, and he will be uh, doing it. Be cutting that down pretty heavily. And in fact, he saved as well before the level, so if he messes up, it won't lose as much time. Just yeah, just save, file. Yeah. yeah, big cheese will probably not uh, not save and will play it more risky. Nice, All and right. then getting a nice uh, nice five four with Pocoso landing. <laughs> he's, he is in fact he is in fact in the team Pocoso oh landers, so that's appropriate. Nice old three fifty four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good IGT for this um, mm -hmm. level. Let's see, big, big G save. I wasn't paying attention. I right, didn't. Did not see. <laughs> uh, I didn't see him almost dying. He had it all under control. Ghost house coming up. It's pretty straightforward. Nothing really too insane. Just some op pretty optimized movement. That's about it. Mm -hmm. Mostly just first row matters. There's a few turnarounds and things that you can Big optimize. Cheese cruising through five four so far. Should be good. Nice. Big Cheese getting about a three. Three fifty two. Three fifty three. Mm -hmm. Also very good. I mean, uh, not very great for Big Cheese, but uh, it's fine for this uh, this range. Yeah, three fifty two. You know, it's nice to play it safe. Because if you die in 5-4 without saving, that oh, is a the, lot of time loss. And I missed the jump in, in Ghost House, or he was playing it safe. Will he go oh. for meme jump? Do it, Walls do it, is do giving it. us a skull emoji, bro. This is not good. Alright, 568, not bad. And I'm just going in, uh, into World 8, which is the last roll of the cannon now. And, uh, yeah. Olza still chilling in 5-1? Mm -hmm. Out of care in the world? Big Cheese, will he go for meme jump? Oh, he will. He got it, yeah. Oh, insane, 570. Meme jump is when you, uh, when you do that jump without slowing down, you only have uh, two frames to jump. And you have to land on like the very edge, which is pretty hard. But he managed to do that, so that's a nice bit of time save. And I'm starting World Eight now. World Eight, it doesn't, really, it doesn't really have any like, like World Five has like huge, huge, huge time loss if you mess up like before Five Tower or in Five Tower. I mean, Eight Castle does. I mean, not Eight Castle. World Eight does have some time, a lot of time loss too, but I don't think it's as big as World Five. And I'm now going through uh, 8 1 with a lot of scary meteors, but they're not very that scary because if you uh, do the movement well, you'll never get hit by any of them. He's about to do a damage boost here. To save some time. Um, Alright, nice. Look at that. Clean, 440. What would we like to see? Big cheese. Behind by a little bit, but I feel like he's uh, catching up a little bit. Fools are getting the uh, mushrooms that he will definitely be needing and using. Um, actually, they're volcanic rock. Sorry, yeah. Josh. Oh, also, Big Cheese missed the the, the little beetle there, which you can throw to uh, to cancel the spin animation, which is a little time save. But if you miss the miss the beetle, of course you can't do that, so that loses a little time. Oh my god! And I'm just barely scraping by the meteor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, 8-2 is actually uh, way faster if done with small Mario. It's also like, I wouldn't say easier, but it's definitely uh, 
I don't know, a lot better. Playing it safe. Volcanic debris. Volza. Okay, he didn't go for pipe. He can 5 3. Kind of cringe. Then he got a very good 5 3. Yeah, still 4 for 4. Mm -hmm. He's very nice. Volza's doing pretty well. Fools is trying to clutch up, save yeah, a little bit of time. Yeah, trying his best to catch up a bit, a bit, yeah. After that tragic performance of Caleb. Yeah. Fools did not choke Caleb. Well, Big Cheese kind of struggling in A2. Maybe he's a bit scared to get hit. Not great movements, but he's just making it through. Alright, NM going into the auto scroller. Uh, it looks like Fools is gonna get 5.56. Ooh, barely. Okay, clean secret area for big cheese. And um, by the way, is right now in uh, in Big Cheese are in 8.7, which is an auto scroller, but uh, you have to jump off the coaster, and uh, there's quite some time to be saved or lost there, uh, in, depending on how optimally you uh, jump off the coaster. Also, Big Cheese has had the mushroom on the top of his coaster, which is pretty funny. Um, but yeah, they're going to try and jump off as optimally as possible and save a bit of time with that. May was in fact go for Muffin Triple. Yeah, big, Ooh, two big out of three muffin triple. Volsa triple. Well, muffin triple. Did I say Volsa triple? I did not. Ooh. Volsa! Oh my god. What, what is Volsa doing in 5 4? Oh my god, oh, dude. What is he doing? Please. What is he doing? Okay, I think he's good. I think he's oh, good, he's maybe. Alright. You know? Oh my god, dude. Please, nothing fall on him. Dude. Oh, oh my god. Alright. We're good. You know? Good, good save. Good save. Okay, good save though. We're back in it. I don't even. I don't know. I don't. I didn't see if he saved or not. But we're good. NM finishing up eight seven, going into airship. Second to last level. Oh, team Henry is cursed. Man. I think she's not very far behind. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. No, really. Any any casualties in World Five uh, today? Which is uh, usually you know we get at least one, but it's a good thing we're chilling. Oh, Big Cheese messing up the volumes there. Little bonk. And then now in the airship where he gets the propeller back and, and does some movements. And he's gonna do a couple uh, skips in this level. And then there's a certain trick at the end that people might have heard of. Uh, perhaps maybe they've heard of it yet before it's bombless. But we'll explain it when we get there. And Fulza just making it through Ghost House. Meme jump, come on, I'm do it. About, about to get into a... Uh, it's not going for Ninja, but... High Still five pretty good. Stars. Nice, yeah. And I'm doing some some little skips. Those aren't too hard. For newer runners they are, but uh... You know, once you get them down, not too bad. Oh, does not do the crouch jump. Alright. 
Pretty good. Third skip. Come on. Not going for Clean. Walk. You can avoid those wall kicks if you do an optimal spin. You land instantly on the, the platform there, but he did not go for that. Uh, now he's going into the Bowser Jr. fight. And he's going to try to do bombless, which is where you hit Bowser Jr. without using the bombs. And it's a very precise trick, and he'll definitely go for it. And we'll see if he gets it. Let's see. He's probably gonna go for first hit. Um, nice. Oh, he gets it. Yeah, he got first hit. Now he's going so if you miss that, you lose like uh, six seconds, I think. Ooh, oh, this is coding, but he's still gonna be saving time. And he might get the backup hit here as well. Get... Ooh, oh, he yeah. does get the backup. Double yeah. bombless. Okay, okay, okay. So this bombless saves about 17 or 18 seconds over just doing nothing. So that's a pretty nice time save, yeah. Not sure what pace NM is on right now, but if he gets the meal, then um, he's gonna be on some pretty nice pace. I don't know if he can. He PB says, uh, says meal maybe one frame PB, so like it's very tight. So all right, very small chance. Let's see if we get the first meal in a run. Can he do it, boys? What's a big cheese now going for bombas? Come on, cheese. That's a weird first setup. Hit. All right. Yeah, it works. Oh, oh he like always... messed up. Oh, what oh he, he still got it. it. What is that? What? What is that? Um. All right. Well. Uh. Yeah. The Big Cheese just got the most optimal bomb. Bombless, which saves about twenty-three seconds. I. Uh, I don't know how he got that second it's hit. The most, but, uh, that's the most. scuffed bombless I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. That was pretty crazy. Um. All right. NM chilling in a castle. Uh. Big Cheese. Uh. Definitely seems like he's caught up. He's like definitely saved some. I don't know actually, but they are pretty close. Volza, chilling in a two. He's getting there. Nothing really too insane at the start of it. Castle, just some nice movements, and then after we're getting in to the meal and escape. Is Big Cheese on pace? I don't. Th Think he is? Maybe. If he gets the meal, then maybe. Yeah, oh, I can look actually. Wait, he doesn't have splits. Bulls getting the star pretty nice and clean. But I want to say that Big Cheese is probably on base. Definitely with the meal, the PB. Yeah. Yeah. He just said it. He needs the meal. Yeah. He needs the meal. I know that makes it extra exciting, you know, to see. Oh no! Oh no! NM. Oh, and I'm just. Oh, that puts that. He didn't, yeah, he didn't get the check. Yeah, that's that's put cheese. That put yeah. that's, that's cheese is in front now. Cheese oh. is in first. Team Nature Sus in that's, first now, and I'm trying to cut it a little point. too close. Wow, that is unfortunate. It's the worst place to die. Still, you know, oh, that is unfortunate. Can't even try the meal now. No. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Big Cheese. Let's, let's, yeah. you know, let's, let's, let's hope he doesn't do the same. Big Cheese is our last bastion of uh, extra second last bastion of hope to get the meal. Or we the... gotta see someone at least try it. You know, we gotta see like yeah. we gotta see it go down. He's gotta do it. Yeah, I'm not sure why he went for the optimal pipe there, but I mean... Oh, I mean, yeah, Big Cheese did a pretty optimal pipe as well, and he didn't die, luckily. Get a nice 608, 605 door, alright. If he doesn't get hit in the fireball corridor, which, uh, unlike NSLU and NSMBU, these fireballs in this corridor are RNG, so... Let's see, okay, first set are good. It's a very easy set, yeah. And second is a little scary, but good. Alright, so the meal... One. Is basically when we hit the switch and then he and then Bowser gets big. If you sh if you make him shoot a, a big fireball in like the top uh, corner, and then you basically if there's like a a one, one block gap, gap yeah. and you jump and you crouch through it and then uncrouch and then crouch again and then jump. You can get on like you can like kind of like glitch in there and get on get on top of the screen and then just uh, mm. run across. So uh, hopefully we will see that. And if he does get this, this will be the first meal in a run.
by a human being, so... Ever. Yeah. That would be insane. So let's hope he can get the meal. First thing you need to do to set up and get the fireball, and then he needs to clip him. Oh, and I'm getting a bad fireball pattern as well, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the fireball isn't gonna... Oh, oh, he didn't get the one buck gap. Did not get the one buck gap. He's normally get the one buck gap there. And then missing Bowser jump. Um, yeah, and then you can like clip up. But now instead he has to do fireball manip, which basically you just manipulate these fireballs into going in a straight mm -hmm. line. Oh, we missed one. Getting the getting the one block gap there. The fireballs also definitely the hardest part. And there hasn't been much time to practice. So yeah, and um, Bowser is not being nice to NM right now. There we go. All right. Big Cheese now chilling in escape. You're gonna get a nice finish here. Not sure what pace he's on. I'm guessing it's like something for like 24 something. Oh, and Pixie's doing the, 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 the instant land there and escape as well. That's it. Advanced. Will he be getting Tommy Strat? It feels for it. Clean. Nice. Cheese to Big Cheese. Taking the lead for Team Nature Sus. Now we got NSMB2 next. And me and Big Ear will be taking our leave. I will yeah. be back though for NSMBU later. So, yeah. yeah I will not. Yeah, he will not. Okay. But I will be here with Wilson. <laughs> Goodbye. I'm about to commentate. Okay, hello. Uh, I'm back, uh, unfortunately. And JD is also here. Hello. We've got NSMB2 coming up here with uh, Kanashi on Team... Nature sus. Unfortunately, you don't have the, uh, the greatest quality. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, I checked in with his stream and his capture card's not working. But it's okay. We love Poop Cam. Always a brick at the worst time. Alright, I'm just here to watch NM finish. Okay. So, uh, Fanshee's in 1-1, one, one. uh, this is kind of a just hold right jump level. That's, that's a good view of the levels. Uh, the, like, the main power-up in this game is the, uh, Tanuki suit, which we'll see. Uh, we don't actually get that in World 1 at all. So, we're gonna be small for a few levels. Yeah, first few levels are mostly run right. There's a little bit of left inputs in 1-2, so that's very cool. The second most exciting part of World 1. Meanwhile, in SMBW, Foza is going for Bombless. Uh, I, I haven't gotten any controls. Alright, so I guess we'll just not listen to anything for a bit. It be like that. It's okay, just pretend you're listening to more NSMBW, but like slightly less quality with like more bars. That's, that's kind of this game's soundtrack. Yeah, twice as many bars. Yeah. So, one thing is. The first three levels are pretty simple. It's like that jump that Tanji just did, it's like maybe you could consider it tight. Something we uh, could mention is that the runners are going to try to aim for the spot on the flagpole that gives you 2,000 points. I think you got 1,000 there, but it's not that big of a deal. Because hitting like, kind of that middle area of the flagpole is the like, fastest spot because of how Mario and the flag move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she's uh, going into one tower now. First vertical level, first hard level. A lot of quick movements and jumps here. 
missing a bit of a cycle. Oh, Pic Picasso took a death in 1 2. I didn't see that. That is unexpected. There's a nice little secret exit over here, and that's gonna take us to a cannon. And unlike the last two games, these cannons are like kind of like levels. Uh, you're just kind of forced to run right, but it's like kind of like an auto scroller. But you just kind of have to time the jumps. And like, in these uh cannons, or I don't know if it's just this one or all of them, but there's like red coins. And if you get all the red coins in this one, you get uh, a gold flower in your reserve. And we're gonna save that for later. Commentator controls. Yeah, just just got the MDM as well. Switch to bullseye. So you can kind of see the semi auto Yeah. And she gets all the reds, gets the gold flower. And he'll be equipping that in a few levels now. Instead of like world like five or whatever, like the last two games were in World of Mushroom. So, uh, two secret worlds are named that like, power ups. And she gains star and uh, M1. <laughs> yeah, this game's similar to we in it with the star that you're always moving faster with it. Alright, so let's uh, try to bless Volza for the meal. Yeah. Uh, no meals yet. If you're watching this now, you still have time to get first meal ever in a run. Volza finishing off we for Team Henry. Now all run all teams run an SMB2 now. And we'll have swim in coming up there for uh, capture card. Awesome to see a coupon cannon. Took a death. And Tanishi timing a gold flower from the roulette block. I just realized because it has a game audio. Yeah, should have put on swim lane with the capture card, right? Well, I think Picasso's should work. Unless Tanishi actually has uh, aux cable in. I think for now, we'll just leave it. Right here, uh, it was off screen, but Tanishi killed one of those enemies that were blocking that pipe he just entered. Right. The sea urchins. Sea urchins, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Tanshi moving on to M Ghost House. A bit of an interesting level. Uh, there's like two routes off the start you can take. One on the left is very slightly faster, and I guess a little harder. You have to time a jump on an appearing platform. 
So he's going to the left. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, I missed the quick jump. Flowers isn't really necessary since this is the next I haven't played the game in a while. It's just the next level that you get beef in. Yep. So yeah, it's not that bad. Flower isn't really used. Triple jump here to skip a couple wild kicks. Okay, so the next level is a uh, alleged. Uh, Sneaky Leaf level, and it's also another auto scrolling. Yeah, we've got Danishi heading into an auto scroller, and Mikasa in an auto scroller. Well, I guess Swimdane's going into One Dash Tower soon. Unfortunately, a lot of auto scrollers in the first half of this run. Danishi did uh, grab the gold block, which isn't like you do. Obviously, it's slow to grab it, but he also would have preferred to hit it in the cannon. I think it might have been just a slip of the hand. Yeah. In tower. There's something interesting going on. It's not bad for a, for a race, in my opinion. Hmm. On the Picasso screen a short while ago, you saw the sea urchin that Panishi had destroyed earlier. This is true. So. Oh, this is uh, earlier in the level than I thought. At the end of this level, there's, of course, like a pipe to get out of the auto scroller section. But it takes like a really long time for it to actually get on screen. Since we actually have the Tanuki now, it's pretty somewhat similar to the way it works in SMB3, where you fill up the P meter, and P meter doesn't make you go faster, but it makes you fly. And we can just fly up to the pipe way before it's even on screen. But that's, that's still like. 20 seconds away. I guess one thing I can mention now, I look, popped into Swim Dane stream and then he told me he was gonna go for like every, every hard strat he knows. So I guess that'd be cool to see. So yeah, Tan oh, yep. go ahead. <laughs> yeah, sure, Tansy is going to enter the pipe off screen right now. I think he missed it, yeah. Jumping around there. It's up there in the middle of the screen. It's very easy to like get like off-centered once you're actually off screen. So we're coming up on a, another uh, cannon here. This one, not very special. You don't grab any sort of power to, you just kind of get through it. Got those yeah. throw enemies from DS. And yeah, these cannons can sometimes be a bit difficult starting out, but here in, in a F cannon, it's much easier to just fly up through parts of it, just at the top of the screen. That'll make it a lot easier to not get hit by the hammer bros or the crows. 
can at least get a lot of the platforming in those in the in that cannon. So it's pretty interesting. Yeah, F one's a bit of run right, but then there's gonna be a quick like left right movement through some gaps in the middle of this level right here. And then hitting this block, which will right up to a secret exit. Soon then gets the gold flower as well. Hopefully one of either Picasso or Swim didn't get out of the respective levels before Kanshi enters the next auto section. It's funny, they're all in different levels, and they're all gonna... might be in auto scrollers. So this is the first instance of dash flying, if you want to explain that. Yeah, so... Uh, here he's gonna grab a star, and now he's gonna do the dash flying. So, it's like... kind of an unintended mechanic, where you fly, but keep your rightward momentum, so... He's pressing uh, Y and B uh, kind of at the same time and mashing them to uh, keep flying. And now he's in the auto. Oh, yeah, that skips like the first half of the level, kind of. Otherwise, you'd be in this situation he's in right now where you're waiting, but now this is like an actual auto scroller. Luckily, the other two are out of their levels, so we can actually watch some gameplay. Yeah. Yeah, here in um, the cannon, Picasso hit the block with his tail. Um, so yeah, one thing to mention, the ideal thing is to hit that block in uh, World Mushroom so that it does not appear on the world map in World Flower, because that loses time. And it will eventually appear again in uh, World 6. So, um, there's a small amount of time to hit it to save time over the world map and animation. So if you've ever played this game, you can't, you know that there's like a global coin counter across like the all files and that kind of pauses the gameplay for a second every like or like you know how the game asks you to save after like every tower tower and such but if you don't have like max coins which all of these runners do then it'll kind of like pause for a second to count those coins so what a lot of top runners will do is they'll max out the coin counter up to 10 million minus one which takes like 16 hours <laughs> But it allows you to save like six seconds throughout the run. Just from skipping those little point counting moments. Yeah, about that much. Luckily, you can kind of just set your DS down when you've got it set up and go do other things. But it does take a ton of time. Yeah. Tanishi in World 6 now. Not many auto scrollers in here, so you can get a little excited, but this one's still a bit of a run right level. However, we've got some dash flying going on here. Skip this entire last meteor section, and if he goes up at the right time at the end here, none of the meteors will hit him. So he's safe to just run straight to the end. I think we established in the last game that it's volcanic to be, but. My fault, OG. Alright, uh, six ghost house. These ghost house are like, kind of dark. Good thing there's candles in the back, otherwise we wouldn't be able to see a thing. This almost like, kind of like a try to trick you. There's uh, some doors everywhere and you gotta pick the right doors. Yeah, he's going through two rooms right now that look mostly identical, but they have different sized booze in them. Uh, the next important thing here is going to try and turn around and 
uh, lure this boo away from the switch. Ooh. Eh. Yeah, he does, doesn't lure him all the way away, so he has to take a bit of a damage boost, but that won't cost him too much time. I think this game has a bit... Oh shoot, I also got fireworks, I didn't even think that was a problem in the any percent of out. Uh, I'm it's probably been mentioned in the other two games, but in this game, it's the last two digits have to match on the timer, and they also have to match whatever world you're in. Yeah. It's flowers, world eight. Actually, that's kind of a problem, like six five, but that's the only level that can kind of be a problem usually. So yeah, Tenshi gets a leaf right there. There's a lot of leafs scattered around to run, just in case you need them. That's very helpful. 6 plus 5, uh, somewhat run right, but he also going to be going for a star over here. Save a small amount of time. He gets the star. Just zoom on straight to the end. Me too. I think all the runners are actually on a different region of the game. Yeah, I think we got uh, Japan, Europe, and USA here. <coughs> that makes any sort of difference, but... Oh, oh. Almost had some very clean six tower movement. This is like, one of the hardest levels. Yeah, six towers probably got the most precise movement per length of level. A lot of quick jumps. I mean, like one tower, but also flying as well. And you can get hit by m much of his fire. But the important thing is he flies up and makes the important skip at the end. Saving having to ride a platform all the way up. I think he took the end a little safe, but it was still like overall very clean after the... Uh... So he is... He is small right now, so... You might have to run through this next level a bit without a leaf. So that would be a little dangerous. Luckily, he knows what he's doing. He is on like the best team. I probably shouldn't say that, we can't, can't, uh, vig the commentary, but... Yeah. Maybe he actually builds up P-Speed in that, those stretches of land. So that he can get providing some more platforms. I don't know how I feel about the host saying which team is the best. <laughs> There's actually a yeah, super secret team for, yeah, that might be the best team. We're actually on Team 4 right now. Yeah, you're the only member. It's okay, I'm winning. Oh, I'm six, six, five, one small optimization Tanachi is going for is uh, on these um, seesaws, I guess. He's like jumping and twirling off of them, which does a very slight boost each time. Overall, it's only a, f a fraction of a second and it saves, but in the any percent route, and every little bit matters. Mario one. Hey, you guys are like two seconds off Sabu or something like that, so... Like three seconds, I don't know. This is actually the, uh, final level here. Uh, no tricks after this level. But it is a decently long level. It's I was hoping another bridge would come up and a second half of World 6 would appear. Can't you get to do the... Like, one 
glitch. <laughs> Quote unquote. Yeah, uh, I guess burner clip. It's a, I guess, slightly a glitch because he clipped through the left uh, part of the burner, but uh, luckily he got it safely. He didn't get a burner cycle where if you go through it straight away, you can uh, skip a cycle through the burner at the top of the screen. It's still clean and more clean flying in, in that second room and uh, skipping having to ride the snake block. Now it wants. Oh, go ahead. Sure, sure. yeah. It, uh, wants to get through this coupling room. Every time they flash, they'll uh, freeze you if you're not behind one of the walls. So uh, he makes it through there safely. We haven't been paying attention to the other two too much, but I think that Picasso is having a bit of trouble, and Jimmy's definitely capitalizing on that. Having a bit of a Henry comeback. Who's Henry? We don't know. Maybe it's the Ted. I think that team Ted. Yeah, so Bowser's mm. dead. Oh. Got to mention. Yeah, yeah. The the game is over now. Can you get the next commentators in <laughs> here? I no, can't do that, it might go bad. <laughs> the game's not hope. <laughs> yeah, uh... Yeah. They, jo they... Joke. They love the jokes. Oh, they at Nintendo. That, that's why we keep the, um... Gold leaf by the... Gold leaf, I keep saying that. It's the gold flower, because not only do you kill Bowser super fast, instead of having to jump over him, but I think it, like, sips, like, some Bowser dying animation, right? Yeah, normally, like, watch the bridge fall and him fall down there, but don't have to watch that, so that's like, I, I'm just gonna throw in an estimate, I'd say like a 7 second time save with the routes. It's never actually timed. That sounds familiar. Heard that thrown around before. So this game's quote-unquote escape is kind of... Like, slow. You basically have to wait until you can get high enough to jump to the next section. Unless one of the runners are about to show us their meal. Uh, I don't think there's a way to skip this section. You can kind of like skip the swipes he does. Like, in... Actually, I don't think you can on the first two. It's just like kind of the third one is where the speed really matters. Yeah. So. Mostly a pseudo auto scroller here, but once the screen uh, hits the top, you can do some off screen movement and save a lot of time at the end. But you can also kill your run if you're being uh, too careless here. So, not this time, but the next time Tanshi reaches the top of the screen, there'll be some quick off screen movement. Yeah, he will uh, hit the switch up there actually, and that will be the true end of the run. Doing Asa here. doing an alternate of uh, Burner Clip using a gold block to damage boost. It's a little bit definitely safe and consistent. Yeah, Tanshi is about to finish up NSMB2. And he does it. Oh, and Picasso also took a death in the second room. Team Henry is going to continue to capitalize on that. Okay, I just got we yeah, are a bit late, but we got confirmation from you that that Henry is a decent bet. I don't think he's actually on. No, he's not on that team, but Henry is not a bet. Alright, I think that the U runners are on their way. Yeah. Yes, whenever they join in, we can head off. I forgot who they are. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's... It's Volva? I, I really haven't opened it. Oh. oh, it's Alien. I forgot. Yeah, it's the, uh, the double. 
what is his name? I can't type it in. What's his name? It's not him. I'm in the wrong channel. They'll be on their way. You can watch Casa getting a backup. Question mark. I think you put some weird stuff on stream. Uh. Hello? Yeah, we got Volza and Alien on comms. Wait, Volza's restreaming Skippy's thing, so I have Caleb here. Okay, that's oh. it. Does that work? Sure. Okay, cool. Alright. Have fun. Alright, see you guys. Yeah, we done. We done here. Alright. Good luck. What's what's up, fellas? What's up, guys? Uh, so we had Volza. We got you know we got Caleb here. Um, yeah. This is Skippy in the top right, by the way. Is not Volza. We need that to be changed. Um, but yeah, we got NSMU, uh, longest uh, game in the series. And we got Skippy clocking in at about thirty-seven minutes in length. There are, I believe, two people with sub thirty-sevens right now. Yes, and we have one of them running today, which is the world record holder Essex on Team Two, Team Henry. Skippy's off. So, in this game, they introduced a new power-up called the Ahorn Suit. And we will see Skippy try to get that here. It's pretty quick. Set it with a ground pound. And we're going to be keeping this for, I believe, the entire rest of the game. Um, because, you know, the being able to fly around just adds a lot of flexibility to your movement. And, you know, flexibility is faster, so... Yeah, all right, we got Picasso. He's getting there. Um, and Swimding is, he's, you know, I think Team Henry's. I think they're, uh, they're kind of, kind of, kind of catching up a little bit. So in this game, NSMBU, we're also going to be seeing them turn around. They're tapping left just before the flagpole because the animation is a little bit faster when you do so. Um, World, World One, One Dash One and One Dash Two are. Like relatively simple levels in this game, so we'll be we'll be seeing Skippy go through them pretty easily. Oh yeah, all th all three runners are for NSMBU are playing on the OG version, which uh, it saves about because uh, the DX version on Switch has pretty slow loads, which loses about like I think 25, 30 seconds throughout the whole run, maybe more. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they're all running on OG. I think for NSLU, uh, two people are running on OG, and I think uh, Super is running on DX. Uh, so. Swimming's having a bit of a moment in a castle. Oh, yeah. so. Also, there's different routing for DX and OG, because uh, in DX you can use Nabbit, and in uh, OG you can't. But yeah, Skippy's doing pretty good. Um, one, two, one, one, and one, two really aren't that bad. The Casa finish up. In a little bit. Oh, Latcher's Wii U broke apparently, so he's on DX as well. Oh, okay. So, we'll be seeing two for NSLU. Swimming. It's chilling. Wait, did Skip. So see. <laughs> Skippy got fireworks in one, two. So, oh Skippy will God. be receiving a mushroom in the mail so, from Toad. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you. The in game timer ends with two of the same numbers then you get a little you get fireworks and you get a little gift from toad which is completely useless yeah depending on the final like depending on the double digit you get something different so yeah you get a mushroom there you can get like an acorn a star and other stuff ggs to picasso we should be seeing cads come up now i believe on nsmbu yep so good G luck to him gg picasso swimming actually yeah swimming uh or team henry is uh Done a little bit of catching up. Yeah, we're not a little too bit far of behind. Back. A lot can happen in NSMBU. As predicted, so we'll I mean, we we do we are one of the best teams. I believe Team Henry is like predicted to win. So yeah, we did have some. For anybody who wasn't here earlier, there was a little bit of Tom Fooler going on in uh, DS, but uh, you know. So we're gonna be seeing Skippy go into this secret level in World One in order to skip to World Five, and this level is really all about utilizing the 
uh, like bursts of bubbles from the pipes to get a little momentum boost. And at the end, we're going to have a little bit of a difficult trick, not sure if he'll go for it, called blooper skip, which saves about three seconds. I don't see him. Okay, he's bonked. I don't, I don't see him going for a blooper skip. I really hope he doesn't try it, because um, losing Acorn is pretty bad. I think you get it back in... I don't actually know. Yeah, losing... Having okay, it looks like it, it has frozen. Screen. Oh, we're back, we're back. We'll okay, see let's see if he goes for it. Okay, he's not. Good, he good choice. Not go so, blooper skip is basically you can sneak into that pipe before waiting for the blooper. And swimming almost done. All right, we got Cad. Cad starting up. Almost. Skippy almost messing up the vertical room a little bit. It's not that hard, but it definitely is like, possible to mess up. Yeah, so the world record for this game on OG is a 36.56. Uh, Skippy has, I think, a 38.07 on DX. Cad has, like, a 37.08, I believe, and uh, Astix has the record. So. Mm hmm. So, Cad getting that acorn and moving on. Skippy, hey, you can for see swim. this elaborate path. This game's map is like very elaborate it's supposed to be like i think it's like supposed to be similar to how they did an sfw's thing where they but they had, like, switched world elaborate. three and four cringe we get skippy opening the meverse will he accept the meverse so yeah you do not want to accept the meverse prompt because then after almost every level it'll ask you if you want wait skippy just accidentally re-entered the level so okay he's gonna um be yeah, hey, hey it's fine there. Yeah, we're good a little bit of a finger slip there, possibly, but we will see him. He's probably just like the world five now. I don't know. I guess we'll see. It's all good though. Only lost like probably five seconds going into world five. Cad moving on to one two, and Astix with a little bit of lag, but just finishing up that cutscene. Right, so yeah, we don't have uh, we don't have audio for Skippy, so that's why we have audio. I, uh, I guess I'll. Just... Yeah, we don't really have much. I don't think we have any audio right now, so it's all good though. Um... All right, we got five one, five one. Not really too bad. Just bouncing off these. Oh my goodness! I don't Ooh. know why he messed up that strat. I guess he just forgot. <laughs> it's you're supposed to bounce off these enemies in a specific way that allows you to get over everything without having to turn back. Um, Skippy having a little bit of a mishap here. I will mention that Skippy, um, he didn't really know he was doing this until about yesterday. He was, uh, basically just needed someone quick, so he, uh, he luckily clutched up and was able to do it, so he doesn't really have too much practice in, but, you know, we're still gonna be seeing an uh, epic time. Alright, we got Asics going now. Hey, we'll see if Asix goes for maybe a quick strat, and okay. no, he doesn't. He's not Makes confident sense. with it. You, if you get a precise triple jump into the nut at the beginning, you can hit it, and we call it fast nut because it's very quick compared to the ground pound. It saves about a second, maybe less than that. I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just guessing. So, Ed watching a great cutscene. I love. Cut yeah, scenes. this game's cutscenes are. Pretty long compared to the previous ones. You see Cad's in a cutscene right now. Skippy's in this Toad cutscene. Where Toad's telling him that Nabbit stole all his stuff. And Cad is entering 1S. Um, everyone is playing on the Wii U version. In, in this, in this um, particular section. So we'll see if Cads decides to go for the um, blooper skip at the end of one secret here. And Skippy's moving on to 5-3, which is r relatively simple. You can see we have a little hitch at the beginning, but the rest of it is mostly just holding right, and then some little movement in the end. Cad messing up the cycle a tiny bit, I think, but he's still fine. Let's see if he goes for blooper skip here. And he misses it. 
but doesn't die. You can see Skippy, oh, Skippy had a little bit of a hitch there. He wasn't able to get under, but basically all we're going to do is hit these donuts correctly so we don't get hit as we, oh, Skippy delaying a little bit there, smart. If you mess up the cycles just barely in this 5-3 uh, level, it really screws up the movement and you're going to have to like improvise. Oh no, Skippy went for a pipe kick there, trying to wall kick off of that pipe and ended up actually missing it. So. Ooh, yeah. Um, five tower is going to be interesting now. Yeah. Because actually, no, no, usually... no, we're fine. Oh, yeah. He, he can I was thinking back. of NSLU. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, there's, yeah. there's backup, pro there's yeah, backup so acorns. In we tower. want uh, the acorn for five tower because of the particular skip you can do in the room with the door. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to see it. See, Skippy is grabbing this acorn because he needs it. Luckily, a pretty easy backup. We're going to be going to the secret pipe to the left. And then we're pretty much at the end of the level once we do a little skip. Because obviously, normally, you'd have to be waiting on the snake block forever. But we're just going to wait to gain some height and then fly to the end. A little bit of lag on stream, unfortunately. Skippy has been having issues, but here we go. He should be flying over to the end now. Looks good. And, oh, we'll miss half, but he'll be fine. There's a, there's a lot of nerves going into a, like a relay race like this because there's a lot of people putting pressure on you, so very easy to mess up. Um, so Aztec's actually getting an amazing cycle, which is, I mean, not surprising since he has the world record for this game. And we'll see if he goes for blooper skip here. And he misses it in the same way Cats did, so. Oh, Skippy! Oh my. Skippy losing that the is, acorn. That um, is unfortunate. Skippy lost acorn. I don't really fight. think it's that big of a deal. Um, it's definitely not good. We'll say that much. Five and ghost house is going to be pretty rough. Um, but I think, pretty, there's a, I think there's a backup in secret. Pretty ironic that he lost acorn there, actually, because the boom boom fights are notorious for being extremely easy and repetitive. So, I doubt we'll be seeing that from either of the other runners when they get there. But Skippy has a sizable lead, so... Sure, everything will be fine for him. Yeah, this... talking to Toad. Oh, yeah. Talk to Toad, of course, about Nabbit. This game is kind of also notorious for having a pretty slow early game and then really picking up near the end so it will get more exciting this ghost house level is so um utilizes the acorn usually skippy i think trying to go for some glitchy doing? wall kicks but th there's a strat with a thing called the glitchy wall kick which you might be familiar oh, he's got the, with from he's got like the, super mario 64 um oh bye if you don't have the oh uh oh <gasps> Don't die, please. I don't think he's very familiar. Oh no, Cat also lost Acorn. This is this is not going well, folks. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Asics might be able to just uh Asics might be able to make that little comeback, clutch. yeah. So you can actually fly up to the top of the level fairly quickly if you have Acorn in the room Skippy is in, but or sorry, previously. But Skippy had a little bit of an incident and was trying to go for a more advanced strat that we usually use in other runs. Which I don't care to explain because it's not even in this run. Skippy getting a 441, which I've never heard of before because he lost a lot of time there. Oh yeah, Mario time. All right, now we're going into the auto scroller, which is boring. Yeah, so this is the World 5 secret exit level, which leads to World 7. And it is just completely an auto scroller with some nice para beetles in here, which are kind of fun. Fun little creature. We've seen Cad also able to actually back up losing um, his mushroom too, because there are there are two chances to get acorn. 
Uh, Skippy getting his acorn back in this level. This game is very forgiving in terms of power-ups because I don't know. Unlike I guess the developers really liked the acorn suit, so they put it in a lot of levels. But yeah, you'll see Cad will be able to get this question mark block and then do the skip climb. But keep in mind it does lose about half a I think exactly half a second each time you lose or equip a power-up. So he did lose two seconds in the process of losing and gaining acorn. So you can't just lose it every time, that would be very inefficient. Uh-oh, chatting having a little bit of an incident, I'm sure it'll be fine, but... Yeah, I think what happened there is he's... Oh, no. He's fine. He should just drop down. Oh, no. This is... So I think what likely happened there is Cad was taking it a little bit more lenient than he normally does because he was trying to play safe, but in response to him doing safe strats, he had much more leniency that he wasn't used to, and in the end he messed up because of that, so... Another backup, though. Yeah, as as I said, there are a lot of backups in this game. You can see Asics doing the actual proper movement for 5-3, which is cool to see. Barely making that cycle at the end. Uh, Team Henry is not winning currently. Team Nature Sus with Skippy is in the lead. Um, team, the Ficosa Landers are two levels behind. And then Team Henry, I mean, just about to end the level. Ficosa Landers is exiting. So about a one level gap between Ficosa Landers and Henry. And then one big auto scroller between Ficosa Landers and Nature Sus. Team Henry is losing, I think, because I think there's this guy, I don't really remember his name, it was like Swimmy or something like that, and he was like really screwing up NSAB2, it's really unfortunate. But they might be able to come back because they have a secret weapon on their side, Latchers, one of the best NSLU players to ever touch the game. Other than M-Chan, of course, but we'll talk about that later. I'll be staying for the new Super Luigi U commentary. Got a few cutscenes going on here. Asics just waiting for the block, having Discord chat appear on Skippy's screen. Of course, because we have a bit of a restream going on here. Uh, we should be able to see Skippy doing 7-1 Cloud Skip up in the top right corner. Um, yeah, there he is. Very small, <laughs> but you know. We apologize for this experience. Um, so if, you, if you get your binoculars out, um, we can see Skippy doing some 7-1 Skips. Okay, oh, he got a really good skip, actually, I think. Okay, there we go. All right, so yeah, he got a good uh, start. If anybody had their binoculars out, you can see that he got a good uh, start there. Ask is going to clean kill. Asics is cruising right now. Definitely catching up. Okay. Yippee, getting a fairly clean cloud skip. Yeah, that's pretty clean. That's like a 3-3. Three, three. Skipping the double digits. Cad going into the cringe auto scroller. Got quite a few auto scrollers going on because, you know, that's what this game is all about. In this game, we'll be going to 7-3, as you can see Skippy doing. We're going to utilize these platforms to get a little speed boost. And we'll see if Skippy's going for the star or not. It only saves a little bit of time, and it's like a fairly new strat, so... Don't think Skippy knows of it. And... So we're just going to see him waltz through to the end of the level like normal, and taking it fairly safe. You can actually crouch under there. Oh yeah, also Astix is going for the skip that you couldn't see Skippy do earlier. Sorry for not pointing that out before. Let's see if Skippy gets a good stair jump or not because the stream lags a little bit. That's okay. There we go. I'm sure he did fine. 350 is a perfectly good IGT for that level. In game time, I mean. So Astix is actually on a really solid run. Um, despite being, his team being in last place because of Swim Dang's unfortunate 
Things All right, it's going to be going into one of the most reset heavy levels in the run. We got seven tower. We got some RNG in the uh, Kamek fight, and the level itself is pretty difficult as well. Yeah, not to mention RNG is actually within the Hammer Bros movement itself, so if you're not used to that, it can trip you up quite a bit. Okay. Uh, interesting Dude. tactics. Okay, as but, long as he doesn't lose the acorn, we're chilling. There is backup yeah. acorns in this stage, but uh, they're depending on where you are, they're hard to come. He by. did miss that cycle, but he he knows how to back that up well. Okay, that that was that was fine. That was and fine. he is gonna get something called spin delay here, where he's gonna have to wait to spin jump here. Oh, he actually just goes for the. Or he's just jump. gonna do that for fun. And I think he'll make it up because of that. Yep. But we're good as long as he. Okay. This is one of the worst spots to lose acorns. Okay, so, he's yeah, playing it safe. Like that's he's good. Taking safe. Oh my god, no! Okay, oh, wait. that's not good. Is... He should drop down unless he's going... Wait, does so, he know the pipe? He doesn't... Backup? Okay, so... Okay, he's, he's gonna... I don't think okay, he... Okay, yeah. Okay, he went for this backup, which is slightly slower than so just dropping down. there's like a super room here that has an acorn in it, but it is cool, pretty slow, but I mean... Yeah, but it is the best option if you do get hit yeah. there. Well, he could have backtracked, actually, because he hadn't gone up yet, but... You know, this is perfectly fine. It's all good, it's all good. And we're gonna be seeing Skippy going into one of the most notorious parts of the game, which is this Kamek fight. And Cat is gonna be going into 7 1 to try to get Cloud Skip. Mass is so slowly gaining on them. How the Kamek fight works is basically Kamek will just appear in any of random like 16 locations, I believe. And there's no way for you to know, so you just kind of have to pray. Um, I can't exactly see what Skippy's getting here, but it looks like he did get all three hits. Yes. So we call that a zero cycle if you get it right away, because you didn't miss any cycles. If you miss one cycle, then we call it a one cycle. Uh -oh. oh, Cad! Oh, Cad. That is a that lot is of time loss. Um, there is acorns in 7-1, but since he doesn't have a mushroom, he can't get like the first one, so he's going to have to take the first cloud, which is pretty slow, but... Yeah, it's not the end of the world yet. Uh, it looks like he's... Pad and Skippy are like... They both have pretty respectable times, but they are newer to this game, so they may not know as many backups as Astix does. Okay, so you video is on... He's on Team 3, correct? Um, you video is playing for Nature Sus, I believe, yes. Okay, so, yeah, if Skippy plays consistent, and then Uvid's the only one on OG, so we will be saving time over that, and um, NSLU is a, it's, it's, it's probably the most consistent game in the series, so um, if Skippy plays consistent. I mean, yeah, it's fairly consistent. Cad barely watching that up. Um, and, you know, Seven Ghost House is mostly just an auto-scroller, not much you need to do. Skippy just holding down this entire room, kind of fun. But he is actually going to have to go in this door, which is a little finicky sometimes, but he gets that entry. We're going to see Astix going for Cloud Skip here, too. And oh, he's I actually mean, gained a lot of time over Cad. Yeah, wow. he has gained a lot of time on Cad, and he's going to do a very fast version of Cloud Skip. It looks good. Yep. Clean. And you can actually do that. You don't have to turn back in that first room with a jump called Spade Jump, created by this guy called Spade, who would do it a lot, and he's really good at it. Um... But Astex playing it safe, which is perfectly a good idea. So now we're going to see Skippy going through Seven Ghost House, which is, I mean, honestly, a fairly simple level. As I'm saying, you just kind of waltz through. There's not too much time to be lost other than random little silly stuff. Um, looks like Cad, six from Astex. Oh, 35. Cad also messing up a little bit. That's fine. I wonder... I wonder how much Astix will catch up to Cad's. If Astix is playing like this, he'll more than... He'll Does probably Cat, overtake Cad. Cad is playing fairly safe, but Astix is playing less safe and messing up less If Astix keeps playing so. like this, then he, I feel like he will overtake Cad, but I guess we will see yeah. how it goes. There is a very difficult... Oh no, Ooh. Cad. Cad messing up the uh, air jump. Now there is Acorn good. backup in... Oh, we're seeing uh, Astex actually going for the star strat. So if you saw him duck under there and get the star, that's actually a little bit faster. And, you know, because he's a little bit of a more advanced runner, he will be going for that. And he can just plow right through that bullet bill, which is a big advantage of star. 
So yeah, Cad can get the acorn in seven tower, but uh, it's going to be interesting. I'm not sure where the first... Oh yeah, okay, it's in the first room, so it's not too bad. A couple seconds. Get back up. Okay, I didn't see if Skippy got the fast cycle. It looks like he did. Yep. Wait, no. Wait. Am I, I don't think he did. No, he got the slow cycle. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's not, I, it's not so too bad. I'm not paying attention, but... We'll see Cad having a much more clean first room than Skippy did the first time. And entering the pipe without boosting, which oh, is Skippy. key, so... Dude. Oh, no. Okay, that's okay, he's fine. fine. He's fine. It's fine. But Cad is having a very clean uh, seven tower. And I imagine Astix will too. They're both very solid in, in this level. Okay, losing a cycle, but it's not too bad. Yep, that's fine. I mean, not fine if he continues to do it while Astix hits everything, as he is. 439 for Cad, and we'll see what Astix gets, probably saving a little bit. For this Ludwig fight, super easy. All the fights in this game are pretty easy. Last one's a little questionable, but see what RNG Cad gets. And not going to be able to get there soon enough for that first hit. Uh-oh. A low hit is bad. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. This is not good for Cad. Astix could take the lead here. Ooh, yeah. Astix. I don't think so, but it's going to be I mean, close. uh, yeah. Astix is going to be within 20 oh, seconds. Astix missing Astix's the first, missing the first hit. Uh oh, he also got low. a low one. That's not He's good. He's gonna stick down. He can't hit that. Oh, that was unlucky. Unlucky yeah, again. Bad luck. Unlucky again. See, Astix not getting anything, but we'll see if he gets the snipe here. Nice. Yep. Okay. That's Astix. too bad. Yeah, Astix playing much better with that. Probably something like a kind of uh, probably a 20 second difference between Henry and Picoso Landers right now. So now we're going into seven airship for Skippy, which is just like a huge three minute long auto scroller followed by a boss fight. So yeah, it's we'll be pretty focusing uh, on the other two right now, who are also currently in an auto scroller esque, -esque level. So not much to talk about right now. Super close, only like it's less than 20 seconds. Yeah, about 20 seconds to 30 part. But yeah, Essex has made a pretty big comeback here for Team Henry. And uh, depending on how World 8 honestly could shift this a lot, because Elevator Skip is a pretty big part of time loss. Uh oh, Cad messing up that a little bit. Cad can really not be making these mistakes if he wants his team to clutch out the second place because NSLU, as we've said, is a very consistent game. So yeah, and um, and we got Yuvit on team two, and he's on OG, and the other two runners are on Deluxe, so Yuvit will be saving even more time. So they need all the time save they can get. Yeah, we have, we have Billy in chat actually bringing up an interesting uh, idea about this relay that we can talk about um, because we have a lot of auto-scrollers going on right now. The first two games in this relay are the most volatile, and then the remaining three are mostly consistent. So the, the spread of times is mostly established in the first two games, being DS and Wii, and then this game... I mean, NSMB2 is infamously a lot of auto-scrollers and very consistent runners. This game is fairly consistent, although our runners aren't playing the best right now, if I'm being perfectly honest. So he's notoriously consistent. Let's see if Cad gets this fast cycle here. Just to start to through, nice. but he gets it. Let's get a little frozen. Oh, he's back. We'll see if Astic, Astic gets it at well, as well. Cad. Oh, that's... 
I think Asics is going to take the lead here. Uh, uh, yeah. Because the fight is going to be in, is going to be a lot longer for Cad now. Yeah, Astic should take the lead here. And that fast cycle at the beginning is fairly consistent for these top runners because Ooh. Cad, it's not yeah. too tight. But okay, Cad handling losing Acorn like pretty well. I don't think Astic is going to take the worse. lead, but it's going to be super, super close. Yes, it will be close. And Skippy this will be the first time lead. Henry, if Henry uh, takes second place, it'll be the first time since DS. So. Would be quite yeah, if exciting. If Henry can touch second place here, that'd be honestly insane, given how much time they've lost. <laughs> See how Cad handles this Ludwig fight. He kind of just has to wait for him to drop down. The real Ludwig shoots three fire fireballs versus two, so he should be on the left here. There we go. Yeah, it's I'd about like a ten seconds than, different now. Yeah, I'd say there's just under ten seconds difference. Skippy finishing up the uh, Bowser Jr. fight in airship. Yeah, Astex is only five seconds behind Cad, so could really definitely take the lead here because Astex is honestly he's like he's crazy at elevator. I mean, everyone uh, Cad is also pretty good, but Astex is just like we'll see. Anything is possible. Anything could go down. So we have Cads and Astics entering yep. the auto scroller. Uh, that now we gotta watch Skippy. We can pretty much only watch so, Skippy now. Yeah, the the, the game uh, picks up quite a bit in terms of action in the last world, which is Peach's Castle, World Eight. Uh, I feel like even okay, if Skippy has a super super terrible World Eight, then maybe they can catch up. Mm, they have such a Skippy and his team have such a huge lead that it would I mean, be if he very like, difficult. I don't know if there is if he like some somehow very like difficult levels. So, if he somehow gets like hit at like the end of elevator and falls all the way down yeah. somehow. Maybe there's a know. there's a level in this game. I mean, pretty much every game in the NSMB series has one level that's like infamous for having a really difficult trick. Uh, elevator in this game is a series is has a. It's a it's a completely vertical level where you are supposed to sit on a platform and make your way up to the top by sitting on that platform and waiting for it to rise to the top. But with Acorn, obviously, we have vertical movement, so we can bounce off a bunch of enemies and get to the way quicker. But it is also very difficult to do correctly. So, Yippee, first of all, playing 8-1, which, you know, your goal really is just to sit on some of these platforms that are moving to the right to get boosts, but other than that, it's a relatively simple level. Oh. Ooh, Skippy bonking a little bit, but should be fine. Yeah, he'll be fine. Link it over this, and then... He should be fine here. Yeah, that was a little bit closer than it should have been, but it's fine. And he's gonna have a little bit of issues with the cycle here because he bonked earlier. After I, or in A1, you can either choose to get the secret exit or the normal exit. The normal exit is faster to do 8-2 and 8-3, because uh, uh, 8-4 is an auto-scroller, and yeah, it's just uh, a lot slower. In yep. NSLU, though, you do 8-4, because it's not in an auto-scroller. NSLU, 8-4 but... is much faster. So we'll be seeing 8-4 in NSLU later. So we're going to be seeing Skippy going to 8-2 now, which is a level with a raft skip similar to NSMB Wii. You know, it's it's a little tricky, but relatively doable. So we'll see Skippy having a little hitch, but it's fine. He's fine. And we'll go up to the left and jump on over. Just chilling. Straightforward from here on out. Alright, clean. So, in the next level, 8-3, we're gonna be... Ooh. Oh, Skippy having to turn back to dodge those 55 fireworks. 
He still has his mushroom from earlier. True. So, we'll be seeing Skippy do a little strat where you throw the shell approximately three neck underscores away from this roulette block, and that will give you a star. So, watch him here. And then, oh, uh, a little bit of a, an incident there. He definitely was more than three neck underscores away. We'll see if he, nope, he does not do the backup. Dude. Okay. A little, little bit of, a little scary, but... little incident. Skippy, he just... I mean, he's leeching time loss, but he just... He just has a lot more. Uh, the lead. We'll be seeing Cad and Aztecs fighting Bowser Jr. It should go swimmingly, but... Bowser Jr. just... He's got these bombs, he's thrown down the pets. It's very possible to screw up. Wow, this is... Very close. You know, yeah, there's still five seconds flawless, apart, just about. Pretty flawless fight from both of them. You can see they're both landing on the left, because the left side drops sooner. Alright, Skippy going... Into elevator. Now, I mean, elevator pretty game. much speaks for itself. You'll see how crazy it is. First room, easy. Second room, not so much. We'll see how Skippy handles this. Alright, clean first coin. Nice. He's fine. Okay. Okay, good start, good start. Now, these are some... He's going to be doing all simple strats. Because, you know, you don't want to go for the most crazy stuff in a marathon run, of course. A little slow, but he's fine. All right, that's And clean. that looks good. That's that's the thick of it. There's a one more slightly different cult part up here. Okay, yeah, that's super good. All right. Even if he just plays the safe, then that's still good. Well, he's going for this as well, so let's see. Oh, uh -oh. yes. He okay, he, he played it. He played the wrong area, there. but... He's pretty much at the end, so we're good. Yeah, I think that was a bit of a safe strat from Skippy there, not going for a quicker All right. strat. That, that was good. That was good. 329, yep. not the best, but that was still good. And perfectly so. solid, considering he's in the lead and that's a marathon run. I yeah, imagine we'll be seeing good. a little bit more fancy stuff from Cad and Astix, but, you know, we're going to have to wait and see what they deliver. So Skippy's going to the final level now, but it's still a little bit until he finishes because there's two sections of the final level as with all the other games. So this first room, Bowser Jr. is flying around in his clown car. Uh oh, Cad just lost Acorn. I think, I think that puts yeah, Astix in the lead. That puts Astix squarely in the lead after the next couple levels. But we'll see if Skippy what strats he goes for here. He can they are like right next to car. each other. Gippy just leeching a little bit of boostage from the clown car. We'll see if it gets it here too. Yep, he's playing it a little safe because he knows he can't afford to lose Acorn for the final fight. I'm not sure how this is gonna go. Wait, is there is there any backups in eight two or eight three? Uh, I don't believe so. I think he's. Okay, so Cat is gonna be screwed. losing a lot of time here. Uh, Team Henry will be. Taking the lead over the Picoso Landers. I think his... Actually, I don't know if he can get fireworks for Acorn. I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I have not seen... I don't know when last time I've seen this is. It looks like he's going to be going back to 1-1, one, one possibly? To get Acorn? Which is... I mean, I don't know. That's a really interesting tactic. I'm seeing Aztecs get a really clean fight here. He's actually going to be getting a P Acorn here. Uh, Cad's is. So, Skippy, oh my gosh, he just finished the game, guys. Just kidding. Got him. Wait, wait for it. Now Skippy's going into the final fight, so there's about two minutes left in the game, I'd say. And we are... This This fight is... A little different than the other games because, you know, like, we're not actually trying to go hit a switch. We're trying to hit Bowser himself. 
Um, so what Skippy's gonna have to try to do is get uh, Bowser Jr.'s clown car, and he's gonna ground pound on Bowser's head three times in order to kill him. And we'll see Astix properly be th three Nick underscores away and get that star. Can't get in the peak one, which is honestly a good idea. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it that is an option that works. Skippy's game so freezing at a unfortunate uh, time. Yeah, so Skippy has to get three hits on this boss here, and then the game is finished. It, timing ends on the last third hit of Bowser. Um, I don't really know when that's gonna happen because I can't tell how many hits he's done so far, or if. His stream is even going to unpause. I hope it does before the end. Cat skipping the double digit. Uh, skippy. Mario time. Asics going into elevator. Come on, Skippy. Dude, okay, Skippy's stream is completely lagging out right now. This is a very unfortunate time for this to happen. Yeah, I think he finished, maybe? No, I... He's still going... Oh, I think he finished. Is it the last I hit? I think this is the last <laughs> it's hit. It's frozen on the this last frame hit. we're seeing. Right, he's about to hit uh... Bowser. GG to Skippy. I assume yeah. he hit it. Oh, yeah. Skippy says he got a 39.45. That's a good just, you know, That... Not the best time, but like honestly, a sub. Okay, Asics got a three three six elevator. Um, GG's, nice job. Oh, um, that's really good. Um, let's go, Astix. I think. Um, I, I don't think I don't think we're switching we comms. Um, is Josh gonna come? Or no. I said I would. I said I would cover for him. Okay, I get. I guess we are staying. All right, for guys. NSLU, uh, so here we go, guys. We Welcome should be back. seeing you video come in here. Also, There's watch Toad. Cad doing elevator. <laughs> Alright, we got Toad in the air. Dad's going for the left side strat. Of course. Alright, Cad doing pretty good. Astix messing up a little bit in first room, but that's fine. A couple seconds, maybe. Cad doing pretty good. Astix. Oh my right, god. Super clean elevator from Cad. Astix so almost getting crushed. Extremely clean elevator from Cad. Very impressive. I'm glad he got back that acorn to show it off. Um, okay, I guess we should introduce NSMBU. Uh or NSLU, I mean. This is a DLC to the game we just watched, so the world map actually looks the exact same. Except in this game, the levels are completely different, and they are much, much, much shorter. Most of the levels in the speedrun are actually only about 15 seconds in length, because this game is supposed to be kind of a speedrunny game. You're supposed to do it really quickly. But we still get all the um, super long cutscenes, so that's cool. Yeah, so very, very long game, even considering the short level lengths. Um, so you can see we're playing as Luigi, because it's new Super Luigi U, of course. Yeah, and also in this game, um, if you hold down one of the back buttons when you enter a level in this game, you can uh, play as Nabbit. Yes. In the OG version, in the deluxe version, you would have to go into the character switch screen to switch to Nabbit. But, yeah. So, Luigi has more, is basically just more floaty. He jumps higher and gives a little bit more when he turns around. So... It might look a little funny, and it feels a little funny at first when you play with it, but we'll see you video entering as Nabbit into 1-2, which is... Yeah, Nabbit 1-2 like is kind of a little bit notorious because there's a jump at the end that is not too difficult once you have practice, but 
Definitely screw upable. So we can see Uvid getting this star. And keeping that star chain going. And he's gonna have to make this decently tight jump at the end. I don't even know what Asics's pace is right now, but I know it's super good. Yeah. We'll see what I Asics really says seen. about his run. The only I mean the only like mess up I'm really thinking of is like seven tower. That's about it. His elevator could have been better, right? He, it was like a 336, I think. So, I mean, yeah, it could have been better, but it was still pretty good. Is that... Oh, yep. One more hit. So, final hit for Asix here. And... Perhaps he will tell us what time he got. Nice. GG's to Asix. He GG's definitely... Close stuff for his team there in NSBU. Now we have uh, Latchers, I believe, for NSLU on Team Henry. Okay, so we're going to be seeing Uvid go through um, one secret. And, you know, this is a fairly simple level with Nabbit. Uh, in case you didn't know, Nabbit's invulnerable to enemies. So fairly simple when you play with him, but the main downside of Nabbit, like, people will often say, like, oh, it must be a boring speed game if you can just play as Nabbit and be inv invulnerable, but there's still quite a few tricks, because when you play as Nabbit, you can't have any power-ups active, so no Acorn Suit, and as we discussed, Acorn Suit is very fast because of the versatility of the movement. Yep. Um, so we're seeing you video get a 73 there, which is perfectly good. Pretty clean world one, going on to world five already. Yep. Watch a nice long cutscene. Yep. As, as as we previously established, this game loves to have elaborate world map animations. Ooh, CAD. Oh my god, CAD. <laughs> oh, that, that is a cool strat. Go, I don't know. You had to go underneath. I don't know if I've actually seen that before. I didn't know that was a thing. Okay, right, this CAD is quite bizarre, but up. CAD finishing up. GG's. There we go. Cads. We got Super 64 guy coming up, Team Picoso Landers. So we have U Video clicking through his Miiverse text, and I believe the other two are actually playing on the deluxe version, which is on Switch. So they have a couple differences, mainly being the character switch menu. It takes longer to switch characters. Um, they won't have the Miiverse text after one secret, and the loads are just slower on Switch, which is kind of ironic because, you know, you'd assume most oh, Switch is a later console, so it would have faster loads, of course. No, it's much slower. And we're into the final so, game for all teams. We'll see Latchers picking up. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention you yeah, you video is the one playing on the Wii U version which we call OG. So you can see these vines you, if you don't hold anything on the D-pad, you go neutral on it, then get that boost similar to an NSMB Wii. Uh, fun fact, the neutral vine strategy was actually found in NSLU before it was in NSMB Wii, which is ironic because NSMB Wii is a much more popular game and it came out much earlier, so it's funny that the DLC game that not a lot of people run would find that strat much before. Um, okay, yeah, so we're done with NSMBU, so props to those runners. Shout out to SuperTy16, by the way, who pretty much pioneered the entirety of NSMBU speedrunning as one of the forefathers. I see. But now we're moving on to NSLU, where a guy by the name of M-Chan actually made it more popular. We're seeing Latras have a bit of an incident. I'm guessing he's not used to playing Luigi in 1-2 because that was some quite sloppy movement from him. But I'm sure he'll be cleaner when he's in the levels he's more used to. I think we'll be seeing Super um, going for Nabbit 1-2. In the uh, video playing as Nabbit, of course, in this level. These... These are quite. There's a. It's a quite uh, slow start to NSLU as well, similar to MSMBU. 
but we will get a few cool levels like the next one. Five Tower also has a skip in this game. Most Five Towers in NSMB games have cool skips. Fun fact. Um, we'll be seeing you video do something called left side where he flies up here, gains some height with that twirl, and then twirls and wall kicks up here to get up. See if he hits it. And he does hit it. Most runners... Oh, a little, um, little hiccup there. Newer runners tend to go on the right side, which is... Uh, see, I think it loses about, what is it, a second? Mm, I think it's a little more than that. It's a second or two, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's way safer, but... uh, Yeah, clean. clean I, right I actually side. beg to differ. Most think right side is easier. But the thing is with left side, if you mess up left side, you can actually try it again. Whereas if okay, you mess up yeah. right side, usually you die. So Okay, but right you're... side... Yeah, it's, it's it's basically impossible to mess up right side though. So well, yeah. no, it's not. I mean, all you got to do is as soon as you boost, okay, you just spam. Basically, and then it alien, alien. What what's your PB again? Uh, um, yeah, um, so yeah, uh, going into. So we're actually gonna see you video. Sorry, my internet's cutting out for some reason. I don't know what's up. Um, we're gonna see you vid moving into Five Ghost House, which is played with Nabbit, and you're just gonna grab a star and get to the end real quick, because that's NSLU style. Shout out to M Chan, by the way, who pretty much pioneered this game as well. He made the game what it is today. He's quite the legend. I'd recommend. Checking out him. Oh yeah, I actually, I we also I think forgot to mention that Abbott's swimming in the deluxe version is different than in the OG version, as you can see by super swimming. Yuvid's just gonna grab the star kick, the wall kick. I I also don't think we explained that Yuvid is the world record holder for OG. Yes, and Yato is the only one with a sub twenty six. He's also the f only person to ever get a sub-26, which has only ever gotten once with his 25-58. But, you know, I don't know. Someone might get another one soon. I don't know who that would be. Maybe whoever's mm, in second. I'm not I don't sure think so. Is. For a while, at least. I mean, maybe the second place guy will get one. Maybe far enough. But we'll, we'll see. see though. So, we have Latch finish fin finishing up in 5-1. And you video moving on to Five Secret, which is also an auto scroller. Notice how Latchers doesn't have to watch the Toad cutscene after um, Five One because he is playing as Nabbit, and it wouldn't make sense for Nabbit to watch a cutscene about Nabbit stealing stuff while he's Nabbit and like Nabbit. So we get a little skip there for the Switch version. Switch version is still unfortunately a little bit slower. So Latcher is a little bit of more of an old school runner. I'm sure you noticed as he was commentating um, DS. He, he kind of knows all the history of the games because he was, he was much more into it back in the day. But he, he he does like to come back for these relays and races, which is really cool to see. So we're seeing him switch to Luigi through the menu there because he's on Switch. And he's going to be doing... He might do right side. I don't know if, if Latcher does left side. Oh, he will be doing left side. No offense, Latchers. I just didn't know if you knew it. Okay. And he's going super late there, but that's fine, of course. Just playing it safe. Ooh. And slightly messing up. But as you can see, if you mess up left side, it's usually not that big of a deal. That should be good. Yep. Nice. Good job, Latchers. You've been going into World 7. He's doing nice. He's keeping the lead. So any percent is a little bit of an RNG fest of the category. Um, there's a few points of RNG and the rest is fairly consistent because there's a couple hard levels, but mainly other than that, the top runners have everything down a lot. So we'll be seeing 7-1 uh, done as Nabbit, which 
Nabbit saves like, I believe, somewhere between 0.3 to 0.5 on flagpoles, just because his animation's faster. So we want to play as Nabbit as much as we can, but usually it's just slower. Um, we're gonna see Yuvid going through this level. And now this is, this level like is not by any means easy with Nabbit, but you know, Yuvid, he's just a legend, so of course he gets it perfectly. I'm sure the other runners will too. We'll see Super going for left side here. Uh oh. Wow, that was un that's an unfortunate way to die, I'm not sure. Okay, he barely made it on the snake block here, so he's going to be able to get these red coins. I was just um, told by Asics that he got a 37.25, which is uh, pretty that's insane. a very good time. Uh, so shout yeah. out to Super Attack for that one. Um, Super's having fun. Uh, let's see if we can make Super it. Super is going nice. to left that again, and yep, that's, that's a very good backup, actually. Kind of like okay, it's all good. Yuvido in the hardest level in the game by far. Oh, and uh, Latchers is actually in the deluxe version of the game. You you played uh, Ghost House as uh, Luigi because it's very slow to switch, so it's a little bit more difficult. But there's a few strats strats to do so. One of the recent ones being discovered by Gasping Muffin. I'm going to see Yuvid go in the 7th tower here, which is one of the difficulty spots in the run. We'll see if this first room is pretty clean. He's going to be going for a quick Dry Bones bounce here. We'll see if he gets it. Got the same uh, fight RNG as NSMBU. Okay, he does get the, the quick Dry Bones bounce there. And yes, as Owen was saying, we do have the same Kamek fight, but it it is actually, I feel like not a lot of people talk about this this much, but it is actually much, much easier in NSLU than it is in NSMBU, because you can get a lot more height and get up to Kamek much more quickly. So we'll see you video waking for the cycle. And there we go. Clean. 59. Pretty insane. So we'll see what RNG you would get here. Oh, that RNG. Nobody's actually gotten good damage RNG yet. He gets the one cycle though. Not bad. 149 is still pretty good. Yep, 149 is solid. 153 is possible, but you have to get really good luck. So we'll just be watching some cutscenes and auto scrollers because that's what this game is all about at its core. I love it personally. It's a great game. Let's see. Matchu is getting that 36 in 5 secret, which is optimal. And you video going into 7 Ghost House, where he will be grabbing the star. A little bit of a finicky setup there, it's very easy to mess up, but he gets it. And moving on. As I said, the levels are very short, so that was 12 seconds long. And another weird thing about this game is for some reason they decided to make the in-game timer be real seconds instead of shorter, a shorter amount of time. And all the other Mario games, basically, a second is about 0.75, is about three quarters of a second long, the in-game timer. So, like, if you watch it, it'll go a little quicker, but in this game, they're nice and slow, just like seconds. Uh oh, Latchers. He's fine. You have to wait for this block here in Seven Castle, and then at the end, we just have to get up to the door. So, we'll be seeing Yuvid make his way over and then he's gonna bonk here intentionally to line himself up with this cycle and then we'll see him slow down and wall kick off of here very solid nice. he gets a 75 yep 75 and a perfect door i believe is very good 
Yu video is the GOAT of NSLU, of course. Not including, um, M Chan. The Ludwig fight is the exact same, but you do jump higher, so like, there's like very slight difference. Kind of funny. This game has a lot of like extremely similar things, but then you just jump higher, so it's like slightly different. So, we got some fairly easy stuff coming up, so let's focus our attention on Latchers as he goes into 7 Tower. And see how good his. Dry Bones Bounce is, assuming he gets it. Slash all the other stuff, it's definitely possible to mess almost anything up. Oh, he appears not to be going for it. That's a bit of an older strat, hasn't been used in, like, years if I'm being honest, but it only loses, like, what, half a second? Maybe, eh, maybe three quarters of a second, I don't really know. So in but, this um, in this game, for 7 Airship, it is not an auto-scroller, it's actually very short compared to NSMU's, like, 10 minute long level. Yeah. So, we'll be seeing it pretty quickly done. It's pretty easy, but, uh, yeah. yeah. There's a fairly consistent setup with how to get the skip in the first room, and then we're all good. So, let's also keep our eye on Latras, who is going into the Kamek fight. <clears throat> Alright. Uh, you did going for a bit of a funny old strat, and yep, he got it. That's and basically Latcher... it, that's basically seven airship done. Oh dang, we have had no one with good Kamek RNG, I believe, and he goes down. That's not good. Ooh, he got really it. lucky. Uh -oh. No. Uh oh. Oh my god. No. Oh no, that was a mistake. He should not. He should have gone down. Yeah, he should have just waited. I believe he should still beat Super if he plays well. So, if oh, I didn't no. already mention, the third hit of Kamek is guaranteed to be in the top middle of the screen. Um, it's... I think Latchers is still ahead. Super getting a fairly clean room one. 90 means you're good, pretty much. It looks like T-Bait or Sus might just come away with the win here, but hey, we still got World 8. True. And of course, that boss fight is also the exact same as an SMBU. Because, you know, they bothered to change levels, but couldn't bother to change the boss fights for some reason. Yep. The devs are kind of funny on this one. Let's see. Pretty low effort. Going but... into the Kamek fight. Nintendo just wants to crank out a DLC for some extra cash. With the big bucks. Yes, sir. Okay, so we'll see Latcher's getting a backup acorn here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He should hit that. He should hit that. Oh, my gosh. Please don't. No. Okay. Please. Okay, okay he's good, he's I fine. think. Okay, nice. Yep, good. Okay. Oh, no. Ooh, super. super. Oh, no. Hey, everyone okay. having some that, bad luck That's today. okay. That's okay. Yep. Okay, yeah, that, that's fine. Okay. Nice. And third kit hit guaranteed to be right there. Yep. We're all good. Job. Good job with Super. And you video is heading into World 8. World 8 is pretty quick. Um, 8-1 yes. is pretty quick. 8-4 is like 12 seconds. All very quick, except for the final yeah. level. Yep. So, in 8-1, we have a bit of an RMG section where there's a fireball that you have to wait to break open the secret exit to go to 8-4. And that fireball can be one of in one of three places. We call it right, middle, and left. But it doesn't really matter if you get right or middle, because those are quick, but left side is bad, because then you have to wait for another fireball to drop. Yeah, you videos on the Wii U and the others are on Switch. So he'll be entering as Nabbit, because he doesn't want to get big damage. But the others Ooh. will be forced to not. Super getting the star, but he does get hit, and he's missing the oh, He will get this back up, though. Yeah. A little slow, yeah. but not terrible. So we'll see what oh. RNG U video gets. Super barely pushing out. Okay, I'm calling. he's gonna section, get middle. And he gets Ooh, left, side. left side. So that's bad RNG. That's he's basically the second. only one you want, and it's a one out of three chance. So that loses the bout. What, like 1.5 a second, maybe? I don't even know. Not too bad, he's still cruising. 
think it's a second or a little bit more than that. Quite unfortunate for Uvid there, but. We will see Latchers doing the Ludwig fight as the video makes his way to 8-4. Eight, 8-4 eight, is a vertical level with quite some clean movement. If he can pull it off, let's see if he makes it. So Skippy said there's two left side patterns for 8-1, so I guess it's like a 50% chance of getting a good... Uh, oh, even. I don't know how I didn't know that, I guess. Good movement and, from the video. And 8-4 and is done. Yep. So, unless he dies at the end of 8-4, like Skippy, um, okay. Alright, second to last level, so unlike, uh, NSMBU, the elevator level in this game is relatively easy. Yeah. It's definitely one of the harder levels in the run, but, uh, you know, compared to NSMBU's elevator, it's, uh, pretty, pretty nice. Yeah. If you're, a, if you're a top runner, as these three are, you should not be messing up the elevator. You should get it pretty clean. As you can see, the elevators are horizontal in this game. So we're just kind of holding right and trying not to get hit. A little bit of a funny jump in this room here that you video's in. Right here, but you should get it. Yep. Clean. Um, Latcher's having a bit of a, an incident. I don't know what's up. I'm guessing he just, you know, I don't know what he's doing. Oh, I know. You know, as long as he doesn't lose Acorn. Actually, it's fine if he loses Acorn because there's plenty of backups. And you don't even lose that much if you lose Acorn in World 8 in that game. In this game, it's honestly not that bad. It's under 30 seconds. All right, so the final level here has pretty much the same concept as NSMBU, but it's a little faster. So we will be seeing people possibly going for a quick strat here, where he latches on and then walks. And then latches nice. on again. Yep, very clean. 89, nice. 89. Could have been a little cleaner at the end there, but 89 is very good. That's the best IGT you can get. Latchers finishing up the 7 airship. Super and then entering the airship. There is essentially no difference in the last fight NSLU versus NSMBU. Yeah, it's so, the exact same. There will be seen in the video. Watch this up. Hey guys, it's in the last level, guys. We're almost in, guys. Everyone get hype in the chat room. Yeah, everyone get hype in the chat room. What up, chat room? Hoi. Oh my gosh, you video just killed Bowser, guys. It's so over. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time, folks. It looks like Luigi is going to go celebrate. Wait, what's this? Oh my god, Kamek. We totally just didn't see this in the last four games. <laughs> hey, don't spoil. What's going on? No, you can use Nabbit in the in the OG version if you hold ZL or before the uh, before you enter a level. Oh boy. Time for you video to go get Peach and save hmm. her. Am I right, this, folks? This, this fight is going to be a lot different than NSMBU. I wonder what's going to be different about it. Wait. Look, it's Peach. Oh my gosh, guys. Luigi. No way. Luigi. Bye. Luigi. See ya. Oh my goodness. What's going on? We can't even see her anymore. Insane. Crazy, guys. I love how we're watching multiple auto scrollers, like multiple cutscenes at once. Really exciting gameplay. Alright, if you vid just you know plays even one. if you vid messes up a lot, he is still yeah, he, he has a lot of he's leeway. He's got here. it in the bag. Even if he dies, he's chilling. We say. Clean first hit. Time ends on the third hit. That close with it though. Uh, Latcher's getting wiggle a little bit. Interesting. Oh, I didn't see. And there's the second hit. You would better clutch up the. I don't think this will be a 227. 
Yeah, they're not going to be 227, but Yo. nice little sub 230. Perfectly good time for. You know, and you had to watch the and they had to watch the cutscenes too. So, boom. all right, there we go, guys. That is a 228.05. Yep, that's GGs. Fine. Now we got. Now we got Latchers over here in second place, trying to clutch up that that silver medal going into. Oh wow, yeah. So Yuvid saying he got a twenty six oh two, which is really wow. solid. Wow, that's crazy. Really solid. As as I said, top NFL runners are. And that's with that one forty nine, one forty nine. Uh, yeah, damage. that was even with a with a better with better RNG and and he got bad RNG in a one. Yeah, if you got good RNG. Honestly, if he got perfect RNG, that could have been possibly a record. Ooh, Latchers. Latchers okay, that's, that's fine, that's fine. Ooh, everyone, I mean, that's, that's easily the, the... I think that's... I mean, that's one of the best runs in this relay, certainly. We've had some really solid ones, I know. I think one of those DS ones were pretty yeah, good, too. We had a, I think it was by, like, solid, Caleb or something. Yeah, we had a solid <laughs> DS run. We had a real... I think we had a 2439 Wii. And now we have a 2602 NSLU. We're getting some really solid times in here. This is fun. All right, so... We'll see Latchers, Latchers? Just sitting on the menu. He's changing... What's going on? Players, or... Okay, he's switching to the Joy-Con. Did his, like, Pro-Con die or something? <laughs> Maybe one of his Joy-Cons died or something. All right. Hey, he's still ahead. Okay, we're good. Um, He doesn't have uh, Acorn, though, so this is going to be interesting. Uh, He's he's fine. I mean, he should have entered as Nabbit, but I don't think he knows the strats. He can just jump here. Uh... uh I mean, I'm not gonna lie, guys. Super could catch up. Yeah, there so is definitely a tiny possibility. It's gonna be super close. Oh man, it's gonna come down to the final fight, guys. This is what is he, what doing? Is he doing? He's having I, a little bit of fun. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know what Latches is doing here. What is? Okay, he's playing on a single Joy-Con, so. Yeah, I can see Dude. why uh, he'd be a little scared. Um. And maybe the younger brother is playing. I'm not sure what he's Dude, doing. Go. He, should, he doesn't. I don't think he knew the Nabbit strats or how to play this level correctly. You can actually get the Peachet in the deluxe version, and that's faster. But all right, so uh, Super is probably Latches only about is still um, what, ten seconds behind or something like that. We'll yeah, I see. don't know. This is about I'd say fifth. No, more than that. It's like. 20, 30. Yeah. Yeah, if Latchers plays, uh, you know, if he plays good still, if he plays consistent, he will still take the silver medal, but he's on that single Joy-Con, so you never know. Yeah, this is something like a 30 second lead, honestly. It's pretty far, but uh, he forgot to cancel. He's not entering the last level. He took a capture. Oh, he's taking some screenshots. <laughs> he's got he's to gotta remember if this he, If he moment. messes up, then... If he messes up at all, I think Super takes the lead because I think missing a cycle loses enough time because he has to take this slow. Yeah, he does have to wait here. I completely forgot about that. But he should. Oh man, this is not good for Latchers. This is close, man. Oh no, I can't watch. Super's gonna take the lead here. Oh, it's gonna be close, dude. Dude, no, Super's gonna take the lead by the end of this room. This is gonna be oh, close. Oh no, he won't. Okay, okay, come on, Latchers. Oh man, we got a real uh. <laughs> we got a real we close one here, folks. here, boys. Okay, if Latchers plays perfect, then he wins. I believe. He's the backup oh, for some he reason. He should not do that. That is slow. Dude. Oh no. <laughs> and he's not even getting an RT door. All right, this is dude. Okay. This is super Luckily, close. super messed up. That's good for Latchers. Um. Dude, this is close. I think so. With Acorn, you can manipulate Bowser Jr. to drill sooner. Which saves about, what, five, six seconds? It's pretty significant. So I think Latches is going to be barely ahead, and... Oh, no. What's he doing, man? Dude, Okay. He... I don't know. I, this is going to be I have no close. idea. Okay, so he hit it at 18, and what did Super hit it at? Oh, man, this is Super going to... Oh, man, I don't know. Okay, they're about seven seconds apart, so I think Latches should barely win. I don't win. know. It's going to be close. Latches should win... Barely, if he plays perfectly, but I don't know if he knows the strats for this level. U video seems to be going to into playing, playing some, some Luigi poker or something. He's giving us some some content in this nail biter of a ending. 
Um, He's pulling up the the, the this, poker. This is a close one, folks. We got Luigi poker. Yeah, we up. do have some Luigi poker. As All right, here we go. Hands. This is super close. This is very close. Latchers oh, needs man. to. I don't know. I really Dude. don't know. Okay, no. If Latchers plays perfectly here, he does win. But it, if he mess, if Latchers literally messes anything up, yeah, for by real, more than a super second, close. maybe. Yeah, I mean, he has, like, one to two second lead, probably. You can watch on super screen. Bowser Jr. will down, drill down significantly sooner. So we can see... Oh, no. Oh, I think you, super is going to take the lead here. Oh, no, he won't. Oh, man. Oh, and that super took the lead because Latchers missed the clown car. And it's it's definitely over for Latchers now. I mean, he can't come back from that because Super has the acorn. He's just gonna have way better movement. Team Henry throwing right in the end when they had it all. Quite the spectacle here, folks. And unless oh dear, oh my goodness me, folks. Golly G. And is that? Yep. Super is now done, giving the Picosa Landers second place in the race and securing Team Henry's loss. Wow, that was a close wow. one. Wow, that folks. was crazy. I, my mic was made GG to but... all the teams. Wow, that was crazy. Barely sneaking that silver medal. That is crazy. Uh, Latcher's saying his pro controller doesn't have motion control, so he had to switch to a Joy-Con. That's unfortunate. Um, Little yeah, does GG's, he know. That was crazy. Little does he know. I don't think you actually need motion control for that. But yeah, that, that is was a uh, very close one. Finishing off with a total time of two four thirty four forty eight. Huge GGs to everyone. GGs to all the runs. And now I believe we'll be passing it off to Volza. Yes, I think we will. Yo, huge GG's to everyone. That was, that was real funny at the end. I don't know what happened, but the Joy-Con moment, I guess. Uh, yeah, shout out to all the runners. Shout out to all the commentators. Uh, um, Y'all are pretty awesome. Uh, just a last minute shout out. I'm going to put a link in the description. Or in, in the description. <laughs> in the in the chat uh for like a donation link uh it's totally optional but yeah thanks for participating and watching josh anything to say say so if you're like new in any of the games look some interesting i would recommend like maybe picking one up or two like there's a ton of people there's a big series like nsb series discord that you can find on speedrun.com and then there's a, a separate uh Wii server, but either one you, whatever game, there's gonna be people that are willing to help if you have any questions. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, we have like really welcoming and helpful communities, so I would definitely recommend you know joining, asking questions, and learning some games. It's pretty fun. So yeah, uh, we'll see you guys back in the fall. Actually, this is a seasonal event that we're trying to make happen like every three months. So hopefully, see you guys in like September time for another one of these with new runners and hopefully new commentators too. Uh, but yeah, this was like pretty successful. So thanks guys. And yeah, I think that pretty much concludes it. Absolutely. Cool. Peace out.